Welcome, what a beautiful Saturday, late evening, or early evening, late afternoon, I guess, so 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock is always a weird, weird time. It's a weird kickoff time, <laughs> that's for sure. But we are here in Monmouth for the second round of Class 3A football playoff action. We got number two Princeton coming in here, 9-1, and one, and number 10 Monmouth Roseville at 6-4. I am also glad to be back on WAJK 99.3 with my friend, brother from uh, Long Lost Football <laughs> Coverage, Jeremy Reed. How's it going, my friend? Uh, great to be back. Great to be here. Great to have you back. It's exciting. Uh, unseasonably warm day out here in November. It's uh, windows are open. Much much cooler than the last time we were in Monmouth, which was uh, the beginning of the year, and it was about 100 degrees here. So uh, nice to be here and excited to uh, get this round two game going. Before we, you know, hit the record button, or we went live here, I was saying this is the third time in three years yep. that I've been in Monmouth, and you've actually been here three times in two years. Yeah, the last, so we ended last season here, obviously our regular season ended here, and then we kicked off regular season again here, and now we're back here for our round two playoff game. Um, but, you know, I, so that's good. It's familiarity, and that's, I think that's going to be the story of the whole day is, you know, this is a familiar foe. That's a familiar team that we're playing against. Um and to be quite honest, Brandon, Monmouth is pretty much the, is a familiar offensive set. They run a lot of the same plays that the Princeton Tigers do. Um, so I'm excited. You know, we, we know what we have coming into it. Now, you also don't want that familiarity to trip you up and be a trap game. That's that's the concern. That's got to be what Coach has been talking about all week. Yeah, we don't want a trap game. That is for sure. They're in the middle of the field doing the coin toss now. Like I said, Jeremy Reed, my partner. I'm Brandon Lachance. Filling in for Lucas Burris. He has taken over Princeton Radio for this year. I was here last year. This year, I ended up doing Hall, Putnam County. We had a great season. Unfortunately, didn't get to the playoffs. Princeton, however, is as it is the second round. They got here first round. They beat number 15 Paxton Buckley Loda 44 to 7 while Monmouth Roseville pulled the upset over number 7 North Boone 35 to 14. I mean like you said this could go either way. I mean both teams yeah. are similar matched up and we look out here and both teams have size. Yeah I mean they're they're built on the same principles right. They're big uh, big boys up front. They're going to try to win the, the trench war as we say the, the trenches. So whoever can win the ball the that battle up front's likely going to be the team that comes on top. They like to run the ball a lot. Uh, Monmouth Roseville suffered an injury to one of their star players. Um, their star wide receiver had an ACL injury, so he won't be there today. I'm trying to remember what his name was here. Number nine, uh, Leo uh, Mahoney. 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 And he's hurt, I'm catching the word of. So that, you know, that's means they're really going to depend a lot on the running game. That's going to be their goal. So It'll be interesting to see if uh, how our front seven, which has been so strong all year, stopping the run, how it can hold up against this team that wants to run the football. Well, we got 10-16 left on the pregame clock. We're going to take a quick break. Ben Lachance, Jeremy Reed, we will be right back for more pregame action for the second round Class 3A football matchup between Princeton and Monmouth Roseville. Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank, our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank, our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank, our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive yeah, service you can count on in Princeton. Football action. SITK Princeton, Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine Roseville, together. Support our sponsors you know, as they support cool the Princeton Tigers on their way to the, the state championship. To the Go game. Tigers! Fast and 
courteous. Those are the Today's keys Princeton, Princeton Tigers McDonald's live stream playoff game is brought to you by of course they Central Bank. The the game. Our central focus Princeton is you. Princeton Chevrolet the GMC. The Automotive service you can count on uh, in Princeton. To to this SITK yeah, Kitchen and Bath. Let's imagine together. And, and try to, try support to our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Stop in the run game. Offensively, Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath. Let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine.
kick this thing off. They got quite the, quite the show today. Uh, Pre-game here, a little smoke and fireworks, got all kinds of activity. Yeah, we had a blue smoke screen with a yeah. right in. Now we got horns where I can barely hear you. I and hopefully the people. I don't know are if anybody can hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Listening and watching us probably didn't hear us, but there was a blue smoke screen. Yeah. I have pretty much a uh, you know a theatrical you know yeah uh, I mean game here. I, I'll tell you, it felt like a college atmosphere when I was pulling up uh, because there was some tailgating being done, and there's a lot of folks out here, over a thousand people. People here, I'd say easily. Um, you know, so it was kind of fun. Feels like a feels like a college football game right now. Let's do the weather forecast right now as we get ready to kick off. 35 seconds and ticking as the teams are getting onto the field here. Game time weather brought to you by Town and Country Services. Whether it's hot, cold, dark, or light, Town and Country is doing whatever it takes 24/7. See everything they can do for you at TownCountryServices.com. Just hit the refresh on my refresh button on my phone. Sometimes I don't do that. 59 degrees and very, very sunny. There you go. And it looks like Monmouth must have won that coin toss because we're going back in the... Or no, actually, maybe, yeah. They, they won they and deferred. They must have won and deferred it. Yep, they won so and deferred we it. We have like. Princeton returning. We got number three, Ace Christensen, back there. I see Casey Etheridge over there on the other side. It looks like uh, Common Green is an up, another up back. So... Obviously familiar faces back there, some, some familiar cats back there that playmakers for us. That is always a beautiful thing when you got recognizable names still on the field <laughs> in playoffs, no injuries. You know, Princeton yeah. for the most part has been pretty healthy this the year. Only, you know, obviously, it's you know, it's no secret. The only major injury we had was Bennett Williams, our Division I uh, recruit, you know, uh, recruited the Air Force, had that knee blown out early in the... Sterling game, I believe, and he's had surgery. He's recovering well. He's in rehab. Wishing him the best. You know, he's a hard worker, so. And here is the kick going straight to Princeton, and that is Casey Etheridge catches it, but it's on the far side on our side, and he gets about two, three steps and then falls out of bounds. Yeah, poor Common there. He, he, uh, he probably could have let that ball go, and it might have bounced out of bounds for him. Uh, you know, he could have got that at the 35, but it's so hard to know that on the type of plays, you know, in that kickoff. You just you're in, instinctually want to catch it. Common Green, I remember him last year as a freshman. Got yeah, a lot freshman. of second half, yeah. um, you know, time because you know Princeton was blowing out everybody. He's so that been a great defensive player for us this year. I've seen his name often. He has yeah. stepped it up. So it's going to be first and ten for Princeton on their 20-yard line here in the first quarter. Two seconds off the clock. They're trying the hard count. Saw Monmouth Roseville move just a second, but not enough to get them to cross over the line. There's Casey Etheridge, he was in motion, goes for the block, but Monmouth Roseville gets through there anyway and sacks quarterback. I'm trying to see, that looks like Nick Houston there that made a heck of a play. Did not go for the ball, ball fake, it's, I mean, he, he did not even acknowledge the run attempt there, so. Um, they saw that play, ran right yeah, through the it, blocks. They didn't even touch anybody, went straight to the quarterback. It was obviously something they had kind of planned on, scouted for. Um, and of course, the Princeton starting quarterback is William Lott, the junior. Second play here is a run straight up the middle. That was number one, Casey Etheridge. <laughs> He gets it to the 17, 18 yard line, 18 yeah, yard line. It's going to be third and 12. Got about six of those yards back, but still. Went straight up the middle, had a couple good blocks, got through there. The Princeton line actually touched Monmouth Roseville players that time. Yeah, yeah that, uh, that first play obviously was not. Oh, looks like we have a uh, number 15 there from Monmouth Roseville. Uh, Tyler Finnegan, their, their star player actually, must have a scrape, must be bleed. Looks like he's coming to get some blood attended to. And there is the rolling from the ref to get the play underway. There's a fumble from William Lott. The quarterback drops the snap. Then he bobbles it, jumps on top, and Monmouth Roseville touches him down. He's going to be back at about the five-yard line. They might give him the six. So that is going to be a loss of 12 yards on the sack. So it uh, it's exactly how Princeton didn't want the first drive to go. Um, obviously, Monmouth-Roseville Titans, they, that's what they were looking to do is uh, 
And here's the punt from Jordan Reinhardt. The junior gets it to about the 40 yard line. The Titans take it past the 30. That is number 11, Peyton Thompson. And he's gonna get to about the 27 yard line on the return. So the Titans have great field possession here to start their first drive. Yeah, uh, Ian Morris, our middle linebacker tackling him, got him to the ground. However, as you said, I mean, they're at the 20, what you say, 20, 28 yard line or something like that to start this drive. And I mean, in Princeton's territory already. So this is drawn up perfect for Monmouth. You're two minutes into the football game and you're already in scoring position. And had a great defensive stance, unfortunate for the Tigers. Here is the snap. The quarterback hands off to look like number 15. That's Finnicum again. Tyler Finnicum, he's a senior. And like you said, he is their star. I've heard his name many, yeah. many times. Yeah, he uh, he had a heck of a game last week against North Boone. Between you know him and Thompson and uh, their quarterback uh, is Myers. They're, they're, the three of them are just a three-headed monster, kind of like we have. So... Uh, obviously, it's going to be key to stop them. They picked three yards up on that play, so it's second and seven on the Princeton 25. They go for the run again right up the middle. Princeton stops them with maybe a one, maybe two-yard gain, and that is number 11 again, Tyler Finnicum. Uh, number 11. Actually, Peyton Thompson is the one that carried that. Yeah, as I said, getting, getting all their playmakers, I wouldn't be surprised to see Myers get involved here, the quarterback number three, uh, trying to get all their playmakers involved early, trying to get a, you know, productive. Third and five on the 23-yard line. There's a fake yeah. handoff, fake handoff. The quarterback runs, but Princeton has got him down. That is That's Payne Miller right there, yeah. Number 75, Payne Miller, a name we've said many times for the last few years. And as I said, I wasn't terribly surprised to see him try to run the quarterback there because they're, they're trying to get these guys acclimated and into the game as soon as they can. Um, obviously, Princeton had the same notes I had on that. The Titans had a fake handoff to number 11, Peyton Thompson, and 15, Tyler Finnicum, quarterback. Yeah. And Myers tries to keep it. Payne Miller saw it. Yeah. He's done. This is a big down. Fourth down here. Fourth and it's nine, it looks like. Fourth and nine on the 27. 8.15 in the clock. We're still scoreless. Titans trying to change that, Princeton trying to stop it, and that pass is incomplete from Myers. Going for Thompson, but incomplete. The Princeton D had good pressure on the quarterback and well guarded their wide receivers. Yeah, secondary held up. Obviously, that's a spot of that has had the most growth this uh, season as we've seen it as the weeks have gone over and over. The secondary's gotten better and better. Um, our front defense has been great. Secondary's gotten better. Hopefully now the offense is out here in a little better field position to start, get a positive play here on first down and kind of get the, the cobwebs worked out. After the first possession did not go the way the Tigers wanted to, the defense holds its end of the bargain. There's Casey Etheridge who just gets tripped up. Otherwise, he would have been yeah, gone for he, at least the first down. Yeah, he had a big hole there, and as you said, just kind of got literally a, a, someone caught his foot as he went by the last guy there. They started this drive first and 10 on the 27. It's going to be second and nine now as Casey picks up one yard. Like I said, if he doesn't get that shoestring tackle, he's gone for yeah. at least the first down. He had wide open space over there. Here's William Lott behind center. He's got two backs behind him. That is going to be a handoff again to Casey, Casey Etheridge. There he goes. the first down, and then he's breaking away. Finnegan to the right. He's past the 30, past the 20, oh. and then he misses the shoestring tackle for Casey Etheridge to get the touchdown. Okay, we got to do math there, folks. So 28, that's uh, 22 plus 50, 72-yard run there for Casey Etheridge. Uh, what a play that young man made. Uh, Tyler Finnegan, he, as I said, he is their best player in my opinion. Just couldn't quite catch up to him and get his feet there at the very end. You could see it. He went to grab the ankles and Casey, and Casey felt him come and he kind of lifted his lifted up on it and so. powered through it. He stopped for yep. just a second, picked up and got in there. Needed that big touchdown for Princeton here. 7:25 in the first quarter. We have the first score. They're going for the point after attempt, and we got a flag. Offsides on the defense. That means uh, Coach Pearson's going to put the offense back on there and go for two. I'm sure of it. There's no way he he's pretty much predictable on this. I mean, you get it at the one-yard line or, like, right there. Yeah, one and a half or something. There's no reason not to try it. Might as well try to get it in there. Yeah, this has been a Princeton MO. If you're going to false start or offsides, they're going to go for it. Uh, you know, they're going to go for two. So, Still blown away by that run from Casey Etheridge. He blew away the defense. He blew away everything right there. 
Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You know, so I know we have video on YouTube, and welcome all you viewers. Excited to have you guys. We don't have a monitor in front of us to watch the replays, and I'm not going to lie. I wish I could just to watch it because it was such so well built, blocked up front for him. Noah Laporte made a great uh, block in the secondary to get him down the field there. And when it's, he got it past the secondary, they weren't catching him. They tried. They, they, they almost tried. got him. But, nah, it didn't happen. And Can't there really is Ace Christensen for the two-point conversion run. Goes up the middle. It is 8 nothing Princeton, 7-25 in the first quarter. And that is how Princeton wanted to start the game. Had to win to the <laughs> second possession. But, hey, they got it done. You're just going to erase that first. We're just going to erase the first possession and pretend like it never happened. You know what I mean? Hey, uh, we can do that. We have the power. That's right. Um, obviously, that's exactly what Princeton wanted to do. Now they can kick the ball off, and hopefully you can pin uh, the Titans back in their territory and force them to be uncomfortable. You know, the Titans really don't want to pass the football. And that Tiger touchdown brought to you by SITK Kitchen and Bath. Let the winning team at SITK Kitchen and Bath score a winning design for you. Imagine together with SITK Kitchen and Bath, and of course with the run from Ace Christensen, that's the Cowan Country Services extra point. Find out how you can buy a central air conditioner and get a matching furnace free. It's a buy one, get one sale. How's that, sounds that like for a, extra? Sounds like a heck of a deal to me. I like it. I don't know. I like it. I don't even have a home. I got an apartment, but I might just redo some stuff. I kind of want to buy one just to try to get the Esmond one free. I'm not, I mean, I don't know here. <laughs> Go to towncountryservices.com for details. Bring on winter. I, I don't yeah, know. Let's, let's back it off on yeah, that we, we can take that off there. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm kind of excited about winter. You know what? The reality of it is it's it's okay. You know, I, I enjoy it. My business gets busier. You know, it's a busy time of year for me. By that time, you know, we're in our 30s, 40s, you know, that age, it's like, hey, it's getting a little colder, but it's still fun. Oh, Carlos, what a kick. And that is going to be a touchback, as I haven't said this name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Carlos Benavidez, one of my favorite names to say. Yeah. He kicks it into the end zone for the touchback, so Monmouth Roseville will start <laughs> on the 20-yard line. And here's the thing, it's under it's undervalued how, how important that is for a kicker to be able to kick the ball and get touchbacks like that. Stop them at the 25 with no or, uh, excuse me, the 20, with no uh, danger of having them return. I was I was watching a 1A football game earlier today, but on my way over, opening kickoff, the kid returned it for like 92 yards to like three-yard line. You know what I mean? It just changes the momentum so much. And here is Titans quarterback Andy Myers behind center. Finnegan again with the... It looked like it was actually Thompson. Oh, was that? Yep, nope. it was number 11 Thompson. It was number 11 Thompson. Got probably a two-yard gain as he went up the middle, but he ran right into a group of Tigers. Yeah, he actually got more yards than I thought he was going to because he got hit pretty early, but he kept fighting, kept turning his legs. Um, as you said, did a pretty good job of getting some positive float yards out of that play. We got to thank the Titans press box crew up here. Open the windows for us. So we're like, literally, we can stick our arms out the press box, out the windows. And it's a real <laughs> thing. So as you said, this is our third time in a short period of time. And we didn't know that till today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you learn something new every time. Uh, that was a run for Monmouth right up the middle. They pick up a few more yards. It's going to be third and two on the 28. So they picked up uh, five. Yeah, it was, there it was seven. So, yeah, they picked up five there on that one. Well, look at us doing our math. Oh, my goodness. We're math early in the game. That's I know. What well, usually doing? happen? We're, we're on our A game right now. This is a big, a big down here. Oh, yeah. Princeton just jumped off sides, and they are going to give the first down and five yards to the Titans there. Yeah, that's that's a frustrating thing there. Uh, they they looked like they were doing a shift there, and um, young man that, that made that move, Grady Cox, he's just been getting a little bit more playing time, and he just kind of got a little anxious, I think. It happens. Big game. Yeah, you're yep. moving motions. Hey, you got them trying to hard count you. Hey, yeah, you're you're allowed one mistake. Here is the Titans are at the first down. They go for the run back up the middle. See who that is as we get the debris picked up. 15. And that is Finnecombe. Tyler Finnecombe, the senior, goes up the middle, picks up two yards. As the Titans are now on their 35-yard line, it's going to be second and eight with 5.50 left in the first quarter. The Tigers, Princeton Tigers, lead 8-0. Yeah, I mean, obviously the game's starting to settle in a little bit. Uh, Princeton's looking a little more calm out there. They looked a little out of sorts that, that first set, but hopefully they can get a turnover or possibly, uh, you know, just at least force them to kick here. And there is the keeper as Andy Myers, the Monmouth Roseville quarterback, runs to the outside. Oh, yeah, first down. Gets past the 40. He's going to be like right on the marker, and they give it to him. 
and he gets to the 44-yard line, a pretty nifty run for the quarterback. Yeah, it was. Uh, something that we've done really good this year, and on that particular play, uh, we, we didn't actually uh, – do as well as we normally would was we didn't set the edge and, and get the edge set over there. So um, that's what, that allowed him to get out there around the edge. Hopefully you're still with us. We just had a technical malfunction as a phone went flying across the press box, but we're here. I don't know what just happened, but hopefully it's nothing major. <laughs> hopefully it's still working, folks. Uh, yeah, definitely. We got cords and tripping on cords, but Monmouth Roseville moves the ball about five yards up the middle. So they're going for the run. Yeah. Kind of trying to test the Tigers' defense. And, and, and as we kind of said in the, in the pregame, I mean, they pretty much have a very similar offensive strategy, strategy as Princeton. They got three guys that are trying to get the football, and they're trying to run them between the tackles. Uh, occasionally, they'll get the quarterback on the edge, like we saw the play before that. But the reality is they want number 11 and number 15 to carry the load. And oh, oh, that's a fumble. Princeton's jumping on that one. That is going to be Tigers' ball. That was a bad snap, bad handoff, bad everything for the yeah. Titans. And Princeton pounces. So, so just as it is, the football gods just gave Grady Cox back. That was the young man that jumped offside. They got the first down. So what happened there is Myers turned around, faked it one way, went to hand it to the next one to number 11, Thompson. They hit shoulder pads. The ball popped out. Grady Cox was right there to, to make the play. So fantastic for him to make up for that five-yard penalty. And now he's even he's not even an even playing field now. He's above that. Yeah, you, he's do that great. you do that, uh, you're, you're up there. So Princeton first and ten on the 40 of the Titans. And that is Casey Etheridge getting through the front line, gets to the secondary. They tackle him right in front of the first down marker. He's going to pick up nine. Yeah, he's uh, running, running really well now. Uh, after that first drive of the kind of the weirdness, the Halloween jinx is still on him, I guess, from last earlier in the week. Um, but, yeah, now he's running the ball like we're used to seeing. So second and one for the Tigers on the 31-yard line of the Titans here in the second round 3A football matchup. And here is the pitch. Looks like that is Ace Christensen. Yeah, another nice little gain there. Gets to about the 25. They might put him at the 24, but that is going to be a first down. Yeah, yeah. So good little run there for Ace. Get him on the board. Get him on the stat sheets. Well, looks like a uh, uh, five-yarder there. Nice. Ace Christensen, of course. Christensen, a name we're well familiar with as his older brother was a star last year. Yeah, Augie last year. He's uh, obviously graduated and moved on to the next part of his activities. To be first and ten from the 26. We're yeah, in red they, zone territory. They can't do that, guys. Can't break the huddle with 12 players. So Princeton, yep. Princeton, unfortunately had 12 players in the huddle. It appears, or if they didn't, they just sent their 11th guy off the field. And that is going to be a penalty. Yeah, I saw that one happening. Um, Fortunately, the uh, the 11 man cap off is a uh, pretty. Standard. Yeah, they usually don't allow you to do that. I mean, they will let you play with 10. Ask Notre Dame how that worked for them, though. <laughs> so that is going to take Princeton back to the 31-yard line. Yeah, just. but we got the first down still. Still first down, so no worries there. So now it's going to be first and 15 here. William Lott in the shotgun. He's got three receivers to his right, one to his left. He finds, look like Augie Christensen at about the 25-yard line. It's ace, but yes, you're 100% right. Now I, I, I said <laughs> Augie yeah. that we mentioned his name. <laughs> you brought him in there, yeah. <laughs> you brought Augie back into the conversation. <laughs> Augie, get back in here. You and Ace can play together. He's probably here watching his brother play, I'm honestly. I'm sure he is. But great catch from Ace. He was guarded, hit as soon as he caught it, but he did catch the ball, gets second and nine on the Monmouth Roseville 25-yard line. Preston Arkell's up the middle there. Looks There's like a flag. Might be a face mask, but it could have been a hold. It's hard to tell where that. It looks where the flag landed, probably a hold. So. It looks like they're pointing to the Princeton sideline, and that's what it is. It's going to be a hold. They're going to move back 10 yards. And they're starting from where the play ended. So that'd be about the 22-yard line. Yeah. So if my math is right, it'd be about the 32. We'll say about because, you know, then I'm, yeah, I, I got some level. You got some wiggles, room. right? You got some wiggles. Room. No matter what, it was a 10-yard penalty. Not good. Not what we wanted. And we're going to be the 33-yard line. So, you know, wiggle, wiggle room of a yard. Hey. That's good enough for me. 
So a 10 yard holding penalty against the Tigers pushes them back to second and 17 on the Titans 33 yard line. A little sloppy football here in the first quarter. Not loving that. And there is the handoff to Casey Etheridge. He's going up the middle, finds a hole, gets a lot of those yards back. Casey Etheridge, as I said, he's running hard, finishing his runs very well, um, you know, keeping him in it there. That was a nice nine-yard carry there to make this a third and manageable. The Tigers keep going in and out of red zone, so let's go ahead and drop the red zone in in right now. It's time to dive into the red zone, brought to you by Princeton Chevy Buick GMC. Just like your Princeton Tigers, Princeton Chevy Buick GMC is your trusted partner in automotive excellence. It's third and seven on the 23-yard line, Princeton in the red zone. Casey Etheridge is called, and he gets it past Definitely the 15-yard yeah. line, and that is the first down. Yeah, he started at 23. They're going to give him, what, the 13? He looks like he gained 10 yards on that play alone. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the offensive line are really creating some nice holes, and Casey's doing a great job of being patient, getting through the first set of defenders and then cutting back um, across field a little bit on that play. He's using fancy footwork and his speed and power. Yeah. He, he already knew he had that. That's, that's what he has used all year. I mean, yes. There's a reason this guy is uh, one of the top rushers in the state of Illinois. First and 10 on the 13. There's a handoff. Looks like Preston Arkles. That, that is who that was, number 28. That was Arkles. He goes right up the middle, picks up a couple. They are going to give him three. It's going to be second and seven on the 10 yard line. So 10 yards away from scoring yet again. Yeah. It, uh, uh, just have to keep an eye on that thing. Um, <laughs> We're moving, moving fans away. And that was a Princeton fumble as you hear the Monmouth Roseville fans erupt. Princeton fumbles the ball and the Titans jump on it at about the 20 yard line. Yeah, we're uh, here trying to fix some audio issues here a little bit. Got a little bit of feedback from our phone, but um, obviously not exactly what you wanted to do from the Princeton offense was yet another kind of sloppy play there and fumbled that exchange. Princeton has come out not looking like the Tigers, you know, we're well accustomed to. I mean, there's been glimpses. Yep. Obviously, the big touchdown for Casey Etheridge, a couple other great offensive possessions, but for the most, for a little bit of the game, kind of sloppy. 42 Thompson seconds here. in counting, and Myers throws it up to Thompson, but it looked like he dropped it. Well, actually, Andrew Peacock made a fantastic play, got his hand in there with his left hand, swatted the ball up, and Thompson, as you said, he actually almost circled back under the flip and caught it on the on the deflection but yeah great play there um, by everybody involved honestly as I said it was almost a great play for them but Andrew Peacock making a nice pass break up there and that's exactly why we have two men in the booth I am in a <laughs> yeah, yeah. right in front of me where yeah. the ball's at so yeah. I am moving from window to window yep. so we got Jeremy Reed the, the eyes right here so Monmouth Roseville goes back to the run up the middle as it was second and 10 on the 17 yard line. They may have picked up one. Number 11, um, that is if I believe right, Thompson. Thompson. Thompson, yep. And I, I got Thompson is Thompson. 11 and Finnicum is 15. 15. And three, those are like literally the only, th those are like the only three guys yep. are going to know right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're doing their thing for the, the if Titans. If something changes, we'll get new names. I think they're going to take this to the quarter break, so. Yep, we got nine and ticking and they're just standing in the huddle. Looks like that's how we're going to end the quarter. The Princeton Tigers lead the Monmouth Roseville Titans 8-0 here after the first and the second round matchup in the Class 3A football bracket. Brandon LaChance, Jeremy Reed, we will be back right after this break. Too many phones there. Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers!
the Wood Brothers. Yeah, the Wood Brothers. <laughs> not one of our sponsors, but not one of our sponsors. Third and eight. Because I'm from Dota, we'll give them a shout out. But it's third and eight for the Titans on the 20 yard line. And quarterback Myers getting pressured by three Tigers. He has to throw it out of bounds. He was going to be in massive pain if he did not get rid of it. As the Tigers were chasing him down. Obvious situation where they're punting the football here. Uh, got a little bit of weirdness in my, I can't hear anything right now on my headset. There we go. I'm back. Can you hear? You good? I'm back. Uh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> couldn't hear anything there for a second, folks. But yeah, uh, obviously you had to throw that ball away. Pressure was fantastic by our front front four there. Um, and they're going to kick this ball away. And before I said Star Rock Wood Products, we yeah. have to say WHK 99.3, Brendan LaChance, Jeremy Reed. We are also on the Star Rock Media YouTube channel. As we have video for this, there's Noah Laporte, the Princeton Jr. with the return. Gets a good 15, 20. He's going down the sideline, but he meets a Titan at the 30-yard line, 29-yard line. Great return from Noah Laporte. Yeah, it was number 50. Uh, I even got in with a, a good tackle there, but Noah finished and, and followed right through him, fell through him. So that's a, obviously a great run back, and that's why Noah's back there in these situations. One thing about doing so many different things, radio, newspapers, magazines. You, you mix them up sooner or later. Start to crisscross advertisers and sponsors. Thank you to all of you. Yeah, that everybody us, that lets us do this. Yeah, it brings the game here. We're in Princeton bringing this game to you. Two mediums, radio and video. Here is William Lott in the shotgun. Three receivers to his right. He finds Casey Etheridge. That's a screen pass. Gets to, oh, I want to say about an eight, about a seven, eight-yard pickup there. Yeah, it was a pretty much straight up. As you oh. said, they had the, the multi-wide receiver set out there. They were just designed to block Casey. Just literally churned. He didn't even move anywhere. He just churned, pivoted, caught the ball, and uh, followed his blockers for a nice seven-yard game there. <laughs> it is going to be second and three on the 22-yard line. Princeton back in red zone territory. And that, of course, is brought to you by Princeton Chevy Buick GMC. Here's Lott behind center. He hands off to Preston. Oh, come on, Preston. He's got a clear path to the end zone, and that is a Princeton touchdown, 22 yards, Preston Arkles. That was fantastic. Offensive line did a great job uh, getting the block set for him early. He really only had one guy to beat out there, so did a fantastic job just turning it on. And we're going to erase that touchdown as a flag oh. was thrown for holding. Late. That flag was not on the field during the entire play. It was not. And I, I hear the, you know, the, the mic get off. I look up and everybody's walking back as I was writing the touchdown in I, the book. I was writing it down on my computer here and now I'm marking down a 10 yard loss instead. Now, there's the holding call. It's official. And we are going to be on the 30 yard line. So Princeton moving backwards. They're going to give them two because they were on the, yeah. the 22. So they moved 10 yards back from there. And that's where we're at. So second and 11 from the 30. And there's a run from Preston Arkles. He same, gets rid of two tacklers. Same play, just the other side. They just ran it to the other side. Um, obviously trying to get Preston his touchdown back on the board. He gets to the 23-yard line. Good pickup from Preston. This is going to be third and five. Yeah. Third and four, sorry. Third and four. Nice seven-yard carry there. Um, I was shifting my feet. Almost knocked over Jimmy Reed. We're yeah. a game of football right here in the press box. I'm getting physical up here in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Third and four on the 23-yard line. Princeton in red zone territory of the Titans. Looks like a Titan is off, and he is. That is going to be offsides. On nope, the Titans. that on the front. Oh, they're calling on Princeton. Wow. I saw the Titan guy cross first. I did too. That's but Princeton oh. must have jumped to make him jump, yeah. if that's what they're calling. That's what they called. I don't know they agree with it, but that's what they called. Because we saw the Titans guy in the line. Like I was in the Titans, line, and I like feel like that's what affected the movement. But... Uh, they call it on the Tigers. Obviously, so we're not down there on the field making the call. So We're not. I took my referee shirt off after basketball <laughs> games this morning at Trinity Catholic. Did two basketball games in a seventh grade tournament for the boys. Then we're here, Princeton Radio, WAJK 99.3. Ah. Third and nine for the Tigers, and we're going to have a timeout called by the Titans. Coach Olofsson is not, not happy with something, so... So there is a timeout from the Titans. 10-29 left in the second quarter. The Tigers lead 8-0 here in the second round. 3A 
playoff matchup. It is still a beautiful day. The sun's starting to go down a little bit, so the you know hoodies, jackets, coats are warranted, but it is still beautiful. Yeah, speaking of the 3A playoffs, uh, we have we've pretty much um, almost got our 3A quarterfinal brackets. So. Hold, on, hold on, let me do the setup. And oh, do the setup. Off. Let me do the setup. Let me do the setup. This scoreboard update is brought to you by In-Home Care Connection and IHCC Hospice, providing home health, hospice, and caregiver services. Go ahead, read off some scores for me. Uh, so in the 3A football, in the north bracket first, Byron beat Piatone today, 56-7, to so they're in the quarterfinals. Lombardi Montini beat Fairbury Prairie Central, 44-20, to so they're in the quarterfinals. Um, in the south side of the bracket, Mount Carmel beat Sullivan, 42-21. Uh, to uh, This score's not official. Um, William Lott chucking the ball up. He finds a receiver. That's Preston Arkles in the middle of the field. That's going to be a first down as he gets past the 20-yard line. We'll get back to our yeah, we'll back to that. We'll get to that later. Let's get back to football. They got that playoff quick. They ran right out, ran that play. Go ahead and list off what you're doing. Is there... They're resetting there. So, yeah, it uh, looks like DeCoin's going to win down there in the south bracket. Um, St. Joseph may upset Roxana, which is going to be a surprise win down there, and Greenville is probably going to win as well to set the rest of it. First and 10 for the Tigers on the 17-yard line of the Titans. There's a run up the middle. Cannot see who it was, but I'm pretty sure it's Casey Etheridge, think, and it is. Yeah, it's like, I think it was Casey, but I'm not sure <laughs> myself either. He picks up eight yards on the carry up the middle. It is second and two on the 10-yard line. We have other scores as well from teams in the area. We will get to them in just a second as Etheridge trying to get this first down. Boying in the middle. He might have got it. He might be right there, and he does get it. Gets the first down. A little three-yard carry. They're going to account for it. So, Yeah, it's not honestly been the prettiest first half of the football so far, but they're still plugging away, and they got the ball and got a potential to go up by two scores. Princeton Chevy Buick GMC, our red zone sponsor, as the Tigers are on the eight-yard line of the Titans. They lead 8-0 and are trying to add on. Here's William Lott behind center. Etheridge went motion, but the handoff is to Preston Arkles trying to get that touchdown back that was erased. He's going to get inside the five. Looks like the four-yard line, but does not hit the end zone. Well, that's a nice four-yard gain. He only needs four more. I wouldn't be surprised to see if Coach doesn't come back to him one more time. Um, Looks like they did place it on the five. Okay. It's like the uh, four and a half. Or yeah, four, four, a little seven, bit. Five. four a little bit. <laughs> game, of, game of inches, they say, right, folks? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like in the middle. Yep. So it's second and four from the four. And there's the pitch to Atherton. He's getting in there pretty clean. Gets hit on his legs when he gets across the, the plane. But that's a touchdown. Princeton now leads 14-0 after Casey Etheridge, a four-yard gainer. Yeah, a great job by Preston Arkles being a lead blocker there. Uh, went ahead and made that hole open up for him by, by hitting the guy and blowing the end out there for him. So. The line is doing their job for the Tigers today, that is for sure. And here is the extra point, and it is good. The extra point is good. Look like Carlos Benavidez, the name that we say often. That's our here. dude. So he's, he's uh, you know, and, and I know last year, obviously, we did these together, and we said his name a lot when we kicked the ball a lot last year. But, uh, you know, this year, he's had a, a pretty good year playing uh, secondary, you know, and, and, and playing back there, so... And as always, SITK is our touchdown sponsor. Let the winning team at SITK Kitchen and Bath score a winning design for you. Imagine together with SITK Kitchen and Bath. And of course, Benavida is the extra point brought to you by Town and Country Services. Go to townandcountryservices.com for details. They say bring on the winner for their business. We will after the football season. Let's, yeah. let's watch football. It's sort of warm weather. After that, bring on the winner and bring on town and country. It's it's inevitable, right? We're going to get it no matter what. And I understand it. I said I'm a business owner as well, and the cold weather helps me too. So I get it. I understand it. Um, but I play a lot of golf, so the warm, <laughs> weather, the warm weather is welcomed by me, too. I played a lot more golf did last you? year. Last year. This year, oh, this I, year. I picked up my refing. I did oh, a lot okay. of refereeing. Yeah. Uh, I did five different high school summer leagues over the summer, so it kind of put a damper in golf, but I have a lot of fun refereeing. I'm getting paid to work out, and, I'm, and I'm around the kids in sports, and I love basketball. There you so go. Hey. 
So the Tigers lead 15 0, 839 in the second quarter clock. Here is a squib kick or for the onside. It or it looks like it worked. Worked. got it. And it worked. It was Benavidez kicked it to himself and it worked. It looked like it was gonna be a squib because it hit a bounce, but it was definitely an onside as it just goes a couple yards. It made the plane that it has to cross, and Princeton jumps on it. That was a fantastic play. I've seen we've seen it once earlier this year too. Uh, I'm glad we got to see it with the cameras rolling on that for our coach can watch that again, but did a fantastic job. Um, and you're doing that, you're, you're getting that knowledge from upstairs that the front linemen are pulling back a little early on those kickoffs, trying to get back to set up a big return. So fantastic job there by Princeton, trying to create another uh, touchdown here. So the Tigers are going to take the ball on the Titans 45 yard line after a awesome onside kick. Very successful. William Lott behind center. Noah Laporte in movement. Now he's in a tight end situation, but that is the handoff to Casey Etheridge, and he's going to pick up about eight right down the middle. Nice, nice little run right there for Casey. He is at the 38-yard line for the Titans. Clock is still ticking, 8.20 and moving. 15-0 is the Tiger lead here in Monmouth. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously Princeton's trying to make up for some what they feel sloppy offense early and trying to get some extra points on the board and, and really kind of get this in a game where they're a little more comfortable. So now William Lott is in the shotgun. They're moving rotation sets going back and forth between behind center and shotgun. He's got four receivers, three to his left, and he is going to find East Christensen. That's a first down, and he's going to move to about the 32-yard line. Yeah, it, uh, it was an interesting play design there that I uh, thought there was too many, uh, honestly, I felt like there was too many receivers in the same spot, but it, it worked out for him. But I think they kept him there to block. So yeah. I had all three kind of them right like a, there. Kind of a screen set up for him again. Yeah, they gave um, it to Ace, and then the other two started blocking. So it worked. It worked. So now we got William Lott back in the shotgun. Kind of the same lineup because he's got three receivers to the left, and he is going to give it this time to number 15. Jordan Reinhardt gets the blocks by Noah. Oh. <laughs> and just like we said, those other two receivers do yeah. the blocks, and he picks up about 20 yards. Yeah, that was a fantastic play. Uh, you know, I said it last week. We were kind of talking about it, how under – undervalued or understated Noah Laporte is at his blocking. I mean, that, that young man's out there blocking every down very well, so. We are in the red zone as the Tigers are on the Titans 11 yard line, of course, brought to you by Princeton Chevy Buick GMC. So first and 10 here for the Tigers. William Lott behind center, we have a bunch package. Casey Etheridge was in motion, gets the pitch, goes right up the middle and he's gonna be at the five yard line. So it's gonna be about a six yard pickup. Nice carry for him there. He's definitely getting the brunt of the work here. Yeah, and you know, as I said, you know, it's one of those things that obviously if they're not going to stop him, they're just going to keep going to him. He's, you know, he's he's definitely willing to carry the water for this team. Uh, and the in the front line, they're winning that battle now. That first drive, they kind of lost a few of those battles up front, but now they're they're definitely winning that. So and now they're also mixing and matching too. The little yeah. short pass, little, little it bit off balance. So they're not giving it to Casey every time, but enough to get him to you know handle the job. And there's the handoff, and that's going to be about the two yard line. Couldn't see the number. I think that's number uh, 34. I think it's... Uh, that is 44. 44. Oh, that's Alex Wynn. Yeah, he got some reps last week. So Alex Wynn with the couple-yard pickup for the Tigers. It is going to be third and one here for the Tigers on the two-yard line. So it's either a first down, a touchdown, or... You know, the negative stuff. We're going to talk about positive here on WAJK 99.3. There is the pitch to Etheridge, and he finds pay dirt for the third time of the game. Princeton with the score. Yeah, I mean, Casey's really getting that work done, you know. Uh, again, a little three-yard carry there for him. Um, that's his third touchdown of the day. 
Yeah, so obviously the offensive line is starting to, starting to feel it, get those holes bigger for him every every touch. So That touchdown brought to you by SITK Kitchen and Bath. Score winning design for you. And Carlos Benavidez with the extra point to give the Tigers a 22-0 lead with 5.57 remaining in the second quarter. That kick from Carlos Benavidez brought to you by Town & Country. Also want to thank a couple other of our sponsors, Ace Distribution. Beck Oil, Bill Walsh, and First State Bank for having myself, Brandon LaChance, and Jeremy Reed here in the booth. We are in Monmouth for second round 3A action, Princeton with the 22-0 and, and a special thank to those sponsors. Though. We, I know we added a couple extras on here this week to get the video component. I know there's a lot of folks that, you know, if they couldn't make it down the trip, the game here, they're obviously tuning in and watching it because it's, it's exciting to get to watch it. You know what I mean? So um, thank you for you sponsors out there and making it possible to to, you know, bring this game to everybody back in the community. Definitely love it. I mean, we're in 2023. Technology is running rampant, and we can pretty much do anything now. <laughs> it feels like it. <sighs> I definitely wanted to give a shout out. So, Kurt Workman, do you know that name? I He's do know Kurt Kurt's Workman. the name. Used to work for WZOE years ago. Carlos getting ready to kick it off. I bet the front guys do not turn their backs on this kick at the start here. Probably not. I'm going to go with no. And there is the kick. The Titans take it at about the 31 and get to the 35 as Princeton gets there on the hurry. Yeah, it was Preston Arkles. I made a great tackle down there. He, I mean, the uh, young man gathered the ball up, and by the time he did, uh, Preston hit him. The reason I brought up Kirk Workman's name is he brought to the attention that Chad Hopper had passed away a long time. You know, Princeton native. He's a Tiger super football fan. He recently passed away unexpectedly of a heart attack. And I know he's watching down, yeah. you know, all his love for the football program watching the Princeton Tigers here. And here is the Titans. Tackled in the backfield. Yeah, I was, I was uh, number 11 again, uh, Thompson. They got they handed the ball off to him and faked it over here to the right, but he got tackled for a loss there. And it looked like the lead guy was Arthur Burden for Princeton. Yeah, he's obviously been making tackles for us all year. So, But, yeah, that's uh, sad about Chad Hopper, and obviously our condolences go to his family and all of that. So... I, I didn't mean to yeah, no, bring yeah. it down, but hey, yeah. when you have Guardian Angels watching the Tiger program, you, you got to give them a shout out. So Chad Hopper, thanks for watching and having your presence with the Tigers. But they need defensive presence right there as 11 Thompson for the Titans gets a breakaway run, gets on the other side of the field here. 16. He's going to be on the 46-yard line in 20, Tiger territory. Yeah, it's a 20-yard run for, for Thompson there. That's the first big play they've had all game. Um, and it's at that magic number that we talk about all year, that tw plays of 20 yards or more. Um, you want to win that battle, and, and we have been winning it, so... Peyton Thompson with the big pickup. And now here's Andy Myers, their quarterback. And he's going to get close to a first down, too. Might have got eight or nine yards on that. Goes to the outside and as a big gamer himself. Yeah, they're, as I said, they're not that much different than Princeton and what they want to do, obviously. They're... They got three three gentlemen in the backfield that they're trying to get the football to, and they're trying to trying to run it with them, and, and obviously win the battle up front. Uh, a little bit of misdirection on these last two plays, and it's worked for them, and, and got Princeton off the point of attack. The junior Andy Myers, the quarterback, picked up nine, so it's second and one on the 37 of Princeton. They're going to pick it up there, as that's 15. Tyler Finnecombe picking up at least three yards. Yeah. Just bailed it up the middle, got the job done, moved the chains for the Titans. Yeah, that was a uh, you know, good gain there for him. Another, another five-yard gain or so. Um, Princeton's defense, obviously, you can't take plays off. you got to get settled back in here, follow your keys, and, you know. So first and 10 on the 33 for Monmouth Roseville. Myers with the handoff to Thompson again, but he gets met by a brick wall. Yeah, number 65 kind of cleaning up there, Kate Odell. Um, obviously, he's one of our normal three down linemen. Today, we're in a little bit different set. We're doing like a four a four lineman set um, in the front, um, which is because we knew they were going to try to run the football in between the tackles. So, um, obviously, Coach Pearson came in with a game plan to put a, a extra lineman in the football game, and 
you know, so we got four traditional down linemen. Second and nine on the 32, Myers is keeping this. He's gonna pick up a couple, but then drag down to the ground and kind of fallen upon by four Tigers. Yeah, no reports at the edge there. Uh, held him held to a little to no game there. It wasn't much, wasn't much going there for him. Uh, got a couple yards, as you said, but kind of read that play right from the start. Going back to Kate O'Dell, only a junior, yeah. said his name a ton last year. I would not be surprised if he gets some college looks oh, this sure. year or next year. Yeah, well. yeah, I mean, I've said it all year, the front seven for this Princeton Tigers team is... is and there's Princeton jumping. Uh, they're going to give the Titans five yards. It was third and six on the 29, but they're going to pick up five with the Princeton flag. Yeah, and that's... It's hard to see from the angle we're at here. It didn't honestly look like that he jumped off sides as much as he jumped to the left, or to the right, excuse me. Um, I mean, we could see him move. Didn't yeah, know where he it moved, didn't look he like moved. he moved over the line of scrimmage, but obviously the refs have a better view than I do at that. So, so third and one on the Princeton 24-yard line for the Titans. Andy Myers behind center. He is going to keep it. He takes the handoff to Thompson, but he bumps into his own guy before the Tigers bring him to the ground. William Lott gets a tackle there for it, but as you said, it was a little too late because it was another eight-yard gain there. Um, so now it's going to be first and 10 on the 17 as the Titans are inching, inching, clawing, scratching to get into this end zone to take off their goose egg as Princeton leads right now, 22-0, yeah, with 2.15 left in the second second quarter. Yeah, the Titans made some adjustments, doing a little bit more misdirection and, and changed their blocking scheme up front. And there's a handoff to Peyton Thompson. He gets nowhere as he's met by a Tiger. And that would be number 55. I think it's Jack, Jack May. May, yeah. I think it's Jack May. They're going to credit him for three yard gain still. I mean, which I, I didn't see him gain that much, but yeah, he. It looked uh, like he got right, like he right got there, the line, and that was it. You know, when you've got a minute 45 left here, obviously Princeton's, they got to buckle down here. you got to figure out a way to keep them out of the end zone. Uh, if they get a positive play here, I wouldn't be surprised to see if Coach doesn't call a timeout and kind of talk it over. Here's Myers. He takes a handoff. He's looking for a throw. He's going to scramble to the right. There's no Tiger over there. There is now. He runs to the outside, picks up maybe two, three yards. But yeah, Common Green stayed with him, ran him, kept him parallel down the line of scrimmage and kind of shoved him out of bounds there a little bit um, to minimize the, the potential damage there. It was a good defensive play, gave him a couple yards, but didn't give up a touchdown because he, he had the open field if he tried to get, get through there. Yeah, it uh, looks like he got, as you said, two yards on that. and. As I said, if he would have made that corner, it was it was free run to the end zone. So, you know, third, but third and five, third and a long five. This is a big down for Princeton. It's two down territory for the Titans. So, you really want to try to nullify this situation for them. The Titans are on the Princeton 13 yard line. 126 left in the game. Princeton leads 22 Coach, nothing. Yeah, Coach Allison's calling a timeout. He wants to get a, he wants to get the right play here. It's too too big a play not to make sure you get the right play. By the time the official was signaling it was timeout, the coach was already halfway yeah. through the field <laughs> to meet his team. He was, he was ready. He was ready. He was. Brandon LaChance, Jeremy Reed, we're going to take a break. Be right back for the finish of the second quarter. Princeton leads 22 nothing here in Monmouth. Jeremy Reed, we have 126 left here in the second quarter. Third and five on the Princeton 13 for the Monmouth Roseville Titans. They are trying to get rid of this goose egg. Princeton leads 22 nothing. Here is the, it was a fake hand. Uh, hey, Miller, what a play. Hey, Miller with the 
with the sack in the backfield. Myers had nowhere to go. Yeah, he was trying to get to the edge, and Payne, Payne knew it, got it wrapped around his waist right away. So now here comes Coach Pearson's timeout, uh, exactly as I thought we might have on the play before. But this is fourth and fourth and eight for the first team or 16 for the touchdown. Coach Pearson really does not want to give up this score before halftime. No, you never want to give up a score before halftime, especially. You, know, you want to keep the goose egg down there as long as possible. And not only that, we talked about it earlier, but we, Princeton has to kick the football back to Monmouth, so this is a dibble, double dip situation for the Titans. So, obviously, this, this is the play of the half right now. You know, you got to make a play here. This would be a great time to say ace distribution, because that means then Princeton got a turnover. So uh, a bounce point, count. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So hopefully we hear the ace distribution ad right after this, because that right. means the Tigers defense held up and got a turnover. Yeah, this is a situation that, you know, I don't necessarily think the Titans want to be in a passing down situation. They yeah, you can hear me, right? Um, I was in the, the fuzz. Yeah, the yeah. Fuzz. We had some audio issues earlier, folks, and we finally got it fixed, and we're both elated, so now I'm, like, talking I about it. I thought Junior was going to jump off a ledge uh, real quick. I, so was, I, I was looked out the back. window a few times, but I was getting ready to go out. I was over this. But there was a little uh, static in our oh, room for quite a while. Give me a migraine. But <laughs> putting Titans in the passing situations, obviously, they don't want to be in this situation. So 1.15 on the clock, fourth and nine. Myers going back for a throw. And he just underthrows his wide receiver, and Princeton was there. Yeah, Noah Laporte almost had another interception at the goal line there. Um, he has great ball skill, obviously. We see it on offensive all the time, but fantastic job there. And I already pre-gamed it or gave a, uh, foreshadowing. a foreshadowing here. That Tiger turnover, turnover on downs, brought to you by Ace Distribution Center in Princeton. Ace is creating a great career culture, not turnover. Join the winning team at Ace Distribution Center today. Oh, yeah, it's exactly what I think. Princeton's going to come out in a spread formation, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't run the football even out of a spread formation. We're going to get a big chunk in. Got Lott in the shotgun, and he has four receivers. He's going to do a screen pass, but just misses Casey Etheridge. That's going to be incomplete. But you're right, they had four receivers, yeah. they could have ran, and they were kind of going through like a, a short run pass game. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of a, thing. you know, it's funny, I, I listen to like the, the Manning broadcast, and they call that like an extended handoff. Whenever you can whenever you can get the running back pretty much still parallel to the line of scrimmage and the ball in his hand, it's almost like a handoff, because it's a yeah. high percentage pass, you're not really have to think much about it. Um, and at the same time, you're giving your quarterback the field to throw the yeah. ball, so he's still getting his motions in. Exactly. That little time out there by Coach Pearson uh, wants to dial it up, because here's the, you know, Here's the reality. We got a minute six left on the clock. You got plenty of time to score here, but you also don't want to go three and out so quick that you give Monmouth Roseville a chance to score if they get a good punt return. No doubt, no doubt. Like you said, 106. The Tigers lead 22 0. Their defense came up big with the turnover on down. And now they're going to try to score, add on to this before the second half gets here. I wonder what they got planned for the halftime show because the pregame was pretty, you know, extraordinary. We had smoke, we had fireworks, we had yeah. horns, we had a little bit of everything here in Monmouth. Let's see what they do for halftime. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little, uh, a little worried about it there. I, uh, <laughs> sometimes these shenanigans get going and it scares me out. What's happening? <laughs> is there, is there going to be a star appearance? Uh, <laughs> you think we're going to have a star come on here? Yeah, right? That'd be awesome. Uh, I think I heard uh, Taylor Swift was in the oh, neighborhood. There you actually. Go, there you. Oh, so yeah, Travis. Travis, Travis, Travis Kelsey, yeah. Kelsey will be here too. <laughs> oh the, my God! It's a the reverse. There's a reverse. There's Ace, Ace Christensen it. going to the left. Picks up about three, four, five yards before he is booted out to the sideline, and they're going to give him about five. About five on that. So that ball changed about four different hands. It started with William, then it. I think it went to. Casey, and then it might have went to someone else, and then it ended up in Ace's hands before we were done. Uh, kind of an interesting play there. There was uh, a lot of movement for four yards. But hey, they got four <laughs> yards. They went positive. Third and six on the 20 yard line. There's 57.6 seconds left in the second quarter. Princeton leads 22 0. Yeah, this is, and this is an obvious run situation. I know they'd love to see him pass the ball, but this has got, I mean, he's got to run the football here. Um, and they're trying to do the hard count, and there's William Lott poking his head up like, all right, let's do the play. And that is going to be a handoff. Casey Ather is going up the middle, and that is definitely a first down as he is at about the 36-yard line. And they're running, trying to get in motion to get the next Yeah, get off. on the line of scrimmage and just run again because, I mean, that's a, that's a huge, huge gain right there. 50 seconds on the clock. William Lott behind center, and that is another handoff. Look like to Etheridge. Yeah, same play. They just ran the same play two times in a row. Um, hoping that he could break another big chunk play there, but obviously didn't quite work out. Uh, 
you know, still got the clock running. He got five yards on that, so it's going to be second. This will be a pass. Five. This will be a deep pass, a vertical pass here. Um, hopefully the Noah Laporte jump ball, something like that. Four receivers, three to the right, one to the left. Shotgun snap to Casey. All right. Lots, and he gives it to Casey Etheridge in the back. Gets about one yard. All right. There you let this clock run out. And yeah, kind of, I'm surprised they didn't go vertical there, but obviously they're just going to let this half run out. And that is going to be the end as we're 2-1. And there is the buzzer. 22-0 is Princeton's halftime lead here in Monmouth. Brandon LaChance, Jeremy Reed, WAJK 99.3. And if and or you're watching on Star Rock Media YouTube channel, thanks for joining us. We'll be right back for the halftime show. Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! YouTube channel. Brandon LaChance here with Jeremy Reed. We are in Monmouth as the number two seeded Princeton Tigers are leading 22-0 against number 10 Monmouth Roseville in Monmouth. Kind of getting a little chilly as the sun goes down, but it is still a very, very awesome football day. And the Tigers started off a little, little slow. Yeah. Got to get into their groove, but picked it up. Got three touchdowns from Casey Etheridge, and now have a 22-0 halftime lead. Yeah, as you said, I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily exactly the way Princeton would have drawn up the start. You know, the first drive was a little rough. Um, Casey had some huge, you know, he had the 72-yarder. He had some other big runs. Um, Preston Arkles has been running the football really well. Ace has gotten in the mix a little bit as well. I was going to see here, I got some stats um, while... While I'm doing that, go ahead if you got I will score do the drives. touchdown yeah. breakdown. That's how we like to do things. Yeah. I'll do touchdowns, you do the stats. That's how we do it here. We're like the Legion of Doom in the press box it. here. First quarter, 725. Casey Etheridge broke for a 72-yard run. It was a beautiful thing to see. And then, of course, Ace Christensen with the three with the uh, extra or the two-point conversion run for 8-0 Princeton lead. Then in the second quarter, Casey Etheridge had a four-yard run where Carlos Benavidez made the extra point kick, and then a three-yard run, which also Carlos Benavidez made the extra point kick, and that's the 22-0 lead for the Tigers. What do we got stat-wise here, Jeremy? Yeah, so Casey Etheridge is at 157 yards unofficially already, um, eight yards receiving, three touchdowns, as you mentioned. Um, <laughs> Passing, we got 54 yards so far, spread out a little bit. Um, Arkles has actually got the next most rushing yards. You know, he's had a really good game. Had a hand. He had a 22-yard touchdown 
called back. So, um, you know, ball's getting spread around a little bit. Uh, Reinhardt had a big reception for, for receiving. Christensen's been catching the ball pretty well. So, we're seeing some different looks, but obviously right now Casey Etheridge has been, um, you know, the bell cow. Definitely. He's getting the ball majority of the time, already over 150 yards. He is putting in work, to say the least. Did get an update from one of our friends saying Augie Christensen is a lineman at a school in Tennessee. That's right. I, you know what? I, I thought he went to a tech school. I wasn't 100% sure, but yeah, so he, uh, I knew that he was going to go because I remember talking to his uh, grandparents about it, and, and they, that, that would, now that you say it, it, it does ring true to me. So, Well, thank you, Brandon Crawford. Always appreciate it. We are going to take a break. We'll be right back with more halftime show stuff, information, yeah, information. excitement, awesomeness. Ben Lachance, Jimmy Reed. We'll be back in just a minute. John to Jeremy Reed. We are here in Monmouth, second round, Class 3A football game. Princeton Tigers, the number two seed, currently lead the number 10 Monmouth Roseville Titans 22-0. Our game plan for the rest of this halftime show. First, we're going to do an in-home care connection scoreboard update, and then we will do our second half adjustments of what Princeton needs to do to continue to have the lead and go into the quarterfinals. Advancing in the postseason is what they want to do. So hopefully they can keep this 22-0 lead. This scoreboard update brought to you by In-Home Care Connection and IHCC Hospice, providing home health, hospice, and caregiver services. Locally owned In-Home Care Connection and IHCC Hospice is here for you. Find out more at IHCC.care. 
First of all, thank you to John Small, the man usually behind the scenes, but he is not. At the moment, we got Mike Redmond. Also, a big thanks to him. But Small has been sending me all kinds of score updates. So I'm going to read off a bunch of stuff. And then, of course, Jeremy, whatever I don't say, then you can I'll, add I'll in here. I'll fill in whatever you don't have. Perfect. We'll start off with eight-man football as Amboy Memorial, Ohio, defeated Flanagan Cornell Woodland 62-7. to They are moving into next week's semifinals of the eight-man bracket. In Class 1A, Anawan Weathersfield beat Morrison 13 to 6. This sets up a crazy matchup between Anwan Weathersfield and Lena Winslow, who has been dominant all season long, number one in 1A. That's going to be a quarterfinal. In 2A, Seneca beat Rock Ridge 47 to 14. Happy for Seneca, but I'm kind of shocked because I've seen Rock Ridge against Hall and their defense was stout, but obviously not against Seneca. Then in 5A, Dixon fell to St. Lawrence 31 to 21. In Cross country, we have the state cross country meet today for the girls. Seneca's Evelyn O'Connor was 27th, 18 minutes, 10.48 seconds. Henry's Daniela Bumber was 62nd with 18, 59.89 second run. That's pretty impressive. I know you don't say 62nd and 27th, but we're talking the whole state. Yeah, that's a, that is very impressive. Good for her. Then in boys, Morris's Kyler Swanson was 21st, 15 minutes, 6.62 seconds. And Mendota's Anthony Kelson was 57th with a 15, 53, 90. Congratulations to all of them. That's pretty impressive to do. Yes, it is for sure. College, junior college basketball recently started. IVCC is now one and one after they won today, 86-74 against Madison. For the Eagles, Wade Sims had 22 points and Roderick Watson Percy had 20. I know you got some more football stuff for me, Jeremy. Yeah, I'm going to stick right here to 3A first. We're going to we're going to kind of do it by classes. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier, but just for anybody that just tuned in, just listen now. So Byron beat Piatone 56 to seven to go into the quarterfinals, and they're going to be facing Dupec Co-op, the Pecatana. They beat Stillman Valley 50 to 19. Lombard Montini beat Fairbury Prairie Central. That they will be awaiting the winner of this game. Toulon, the number nine in the south bracket, beat Duquan High, Duquan High School, 35-25. That's a big upset there, kind of in my opinion. Mount Carmel suspected to win against Sullivan. They won, so they'll be playing each other in the quarters. Um, and then Greenville got upset today, 40-20 to by Stanford, a number seven seed. And then I was just checking on the Twitter machine here for the last game to see who they'll be playing in the quarterfinals. Um, Roxana, the number three seed, and a lot of team, a lot of folks think that they might be the top two or three team in 3A football right now. Is playing St. Joe uh, Ogden, and it was tied 41 to 41 in the fourth. And it looks like Roxana scored with 40 seconds left in the football game to go up 48 to 41. I haven't got a final update on that, but that is. That's what they, we're at. Yeah, they were down at halftime, and that was a heck of a comeback. So that's that's who we have looking forward. That's who's, you know, pretty much all the games are completed in 3A. And not really remembering the 3A bracket, I did check it out earlier today. The winner of this game is now going to play Prairie Central, correct? Uh, no, they're going to play Lombard Montini. Montini. Prairie Central lost, yeah. Montini beat Prairie Central. Gotcha. Yeah, and so and the reality is if Princeton holds on to this lead and wins the football game, Montini will be coming to Princeton to play. Um, if a Monmouth mounts a... Uh, upset and come back here, then they would actually be on the road. Yes, they would be on the road to Lombard Montini. So well, we're hoping for Princeton. I, I yes. am thinking it's going to continue a lot of the same and hope we get close to that 40 to zero shutout that we had at the week one. Well, let's find out exactly how with tonight's second half adjustments sponsored by Bex. If you need a second half adjustment, Bex has you covered with tasty snacks, food, and drinks to get you through the second half of any day. Jeremy, what does the Tigers need to do to keep this lead going on here? Uh, I'm going to start on the offensive side of the football first. Uh, so they need to clean up a lot there. They need to get rid of these like silly little penalties they're having, some of these holding calls. Um, obviously, keep feeding Casey Etheridge. I think he had 220, 200, 220, 240 in week one. You want him to bust that record. Just go ahead and blow through it. Um, let him kind of run the ball up. Defensively, they just need to make a slight adjustments. They had some 
little bit of counter motion out there, allowing their wing to get outside and, and get an edge set to where they can get away and, and do a little misdirection play. So I'm sure Coach made that adjustment. He's seen it. They obviously run the same offense, so they know what they're doing. Um, biggest thing is it's just cleaning it up, staying focused. You want to get this game – uh, you want to shut them out on this first drive and then score right away. That's my thing. They just need to clean it up. They're a little sloppy here and there. Just clean it up. They had a fumble. You know, didn't yep. result in any points, thankfully. But uh, just need just to clean up the offense. Just a little sloppy. Just yep. a little sloppy. Just a little sloppy. Well, Brandon Lachance, Jamie Reed, we will be right back for the for second half. We're about a minute and so away. Second half is Princeton leads Monmouth Roseville Titans 22 to zero. Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! start second half action but Jimmy just made me say oh wow this is high school football <laughs> tell me what, what we just found out so I was giving that update on that Roxana score down there in the south bracket so St. Joe's it gave up a touchdown it was 48 41 with 40 seconds left they kicked the ball back to St. Joe's they apparently went 99 yards with a long pass ended up scoring a touchdown and with no time on the clock they chose to go for two did not make the two-coin conversion. They lost 47-48 to 48 to Roxana. So Roxana holds on with 21 points in the fourth quarter to win the game. That is quite the game. Yeah, what a, what a crazy game. High school football, postseason, second round. 
Yeah, hopefully we don't have anything like that. Yeah, yeah let's, this just, game. let's hope that doesn't happen here. We don't need that drama. <laughs> As the number two seed in a 3A Princeton Tigers lead, Monmouth Roseville, number 10, 22 to 0. We are about to start the second half here. We do want to read off just a couple more scores real quick. As John Small, thank you, my friend, for sending stuff in 5A. Morris held on against Sacred Heart Griffin. 39 to 36. That's an impressive win. SGH is a really good football program. I uh, played college football with their head coach. Oh, and here's another one. Illinois beat Minnesota 27-26. They're still playing football down there? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> right? I <laughs> uh, hope the young Mac Resendis is doing well down there. And there is the kick. Monmouth Roseville is going to field it at about the one yard line. That is Peyton Thompson, number 11, gets to the 20 and then gets loaded on by the Common, Tigers. Common Green is a tackling fool, folks. I'm not, I'm not kidding. He, he uh, squares people up and makes sure they know he hit them. I definitely want to thank a couple sponsors, Bill Walsh and First State Bank, for bringing us here, bringing us to Monmouth, delivering this game to you on both audio and video this week in the second round of 3A. Speaking of, we have some folks from Orlando and Colorado tuning in to watch some previous, uh, looks like a 77 grad and 1990 grad. So well, We appreciate you watching, listening. Thank you very much as Monmouth Roseville starts this drive first and 10 from the 21, and that is a run up the middle for three yards. They're going to be on the 24-yard line in their own territory. Number 15 starting off quite quite the same as they ended, you know. Uh, obviously running Tyler Finnecum and you know, it's going to be a heavy dose of him and Myers and Thompson in the second half again. I believe those are the only three names that we've said. Yeah, I've tried to say some other fellows, but that's only been like tackles. <laughs> and there's a handoff up the middle, and that looks like it's Finnecum. Yep, it is again. Tyler Finnecum. It looks like he might get the first down. Uh, yep, they gave him just enough yards, so seven yards. So yeah, we had a little debate with the referees, but then the, yeah. the chains moved. Looks like they were discussing it themselves. Um, you know, and, and they had a really good drive going at the end of the last um, quarter where Princeton ended up stopping them in late in the drive, but they're picking up right where they left off. First and 10 on the 32. That is another handoff right up the middle, meeting that Tigers front line. They get about two yards on the run. I see Finnecum and it then... Wasn't Finne was it Finnecum? I, there was a pile of Titans. He was the only like ball handler number that yeah. looked, like, got out of that pile. I'm going to say he carried it even though he didn't come out of the pile with the ball. I wonder if he fumbled it in the pile. Um, they get to because the, I didn't see anybody else. They get to the 35-yard line, second and seven. We're going to go with Finnecum, but there was a pile of about five or six of them, but the rest of them looked like linemen. Here's another run, about the third straight play that they just go straight up the middle. And Brandon Lou, I mean, honestly, in my opinion, it's the same play, just left, right, left, right. Let's just chug it right down the middle, you know. Um, same, just a heavy dose of beating them, man all, you know, mano a mano right up the front there. Um, obviously, you can tell that the Monmouth coaches made some adjustments for their offensive line on how to attack those blocks. Uh, and it's working right now. They're creating some holes. And that run was definitely Tyler Finnecum. This is now third and three on the 40 for the Titans. And they're trying to bust through. They do get the first down as they're going to get to the 45-yard line. That was a powerful struggle run right there for Finnecum. Yeah, that's a five, six-yard run there for him. You know, I mean, he's, he's carried the ball the first five times of this. I mean, he's five straight plays, and they, they're the same play. Like, it's nothing different. I feel like we're at the Illinois Valley Super Bowl because they're just <laughs> bowling them right up the middle. Yeah, it really is. 9.25 on the clock here in the third quarter. Tigers lead at 22-0. That's going to be Peyton Thompson gets about a five-yard pickup down the middle as well. Again, same play design, just a different running back. Um, a... Now they are on the 50-yard line in the middle of the field, and you're right, they're doing the same play. Over yeah, there. they're just going right off the guard tackle, or right between the guard tackle hole, um, and they're just having their front three linemen. Honestly, their interior three is beating our interior right now. Second and six on the 50 for the Titans. There is the handoff again. Same play, just going straight up the middle. But they are pushing the Tigers' line as they're getting four, five, six yards every time. Yeah, this isn't a common thing for me to see. I'm not, you know, to seeing them get, you know, the explosion they're getting off the line there. It's, it's really um, 
one of those things that you're not used to seeing when you watch Princeton football. The defensive line usually doesn't get pushed back. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see this if Coach doesn't have to call a timeout to make some adjustments because for some reason or another they are not uh, they're bringing the linebackers up in that A-gap now. Third and second for the Titans. Looked like Carl Myers Bruce. was going to try to keep it, but he fumbles it. But fortunately fell for right him, on it. fell right on top of it. Unfortunate for the Tigers. but Zero zero yard gain, though, so that's good. And it's going to be fourth and second. So they didn't get the fumble, but they held them where they were at. So it's going to be fourth and two on the 46-yard line. The Titans are into the Tigers' territory. Yeah, and they're obviously going to go for it. You're down 22 points. You're moving the ball pretty well, except for that last play. Um... As I said, you saw the Tigers kind of shoot the A-gaps there. They had the linebackers between the guard and the, t the center. That's the A-gap. Um, wouldn't be surprised if they don't try to fill those gaps again. Here's Myers, the quarterback. There's the handoff to Thompson, and he's definitely going to pick up that first down as he is at about the 41-yard line. Kind of dove there at the end when he didn't really need to. He already had the first down. Yeah, he, he clearly had, a, yeah, he had the first down by a long ways. Um, you know, right now this, you know, this is completely different than what we've seen. They're just not winning the battle up front. Um. Something I definitely wanted to add here. If you like the color blue, this is a perfect game. <laughs> as the Titans are in a dark blue with right a gray. Dark. And then we have the Tigers in white and blue. Myers trying to scramble away from the Tiger defense. But it didn't work at first. And then he picks up about six, seven yards. And the Titans sideline wanted a flag there because he got pushed at the end. But I think he was still in bounds when he got pushed. Yeah, I didn't think that was anything. No ill intent. You know, nothing like that. Um... I honestly feel like he, you know, just kind of got shoved to the sideline. I don't think it was anything ill intent there by, uh, I think it was Peyton, uh, Peyton Miller that made that push. So the Titans now have a second and one. They're on the 33 yard line of the Tigers. Looks like a very long one. And coach is making some adjustments on the defensive line. We went back to our, well, three, now we're down to a four down lineman. And there was the handoff, looked like to Thompson, Peyton Thompson. He may have picked up a yard. That was, that was Ian May that, uh, actually is our linebacker that lined up there at the nose tackle there and kind of made that tackle. Um, but yeah, as, I, as I was getting ready to say there, you know, Princeton kind of does a 3-5-5 five, five sometimes and Today they've been running a four-man front. Uh, now they're back to the four-man front. Look on this down. Third and one for the Titans. There's the handoff. This time to Tyler Finnicum. He dives through the middle. He did get the first down. It's like a two-yard gain there for him. So Monmouth Roseville just pounding it up the middle over and over and over again. We've seen the same play with different runners about eight or nine times now. Yeah, like getting first downs and moving down the field. Yeah, this is, uh, look at me see what number play of drive this is because it's, it's only been two plays that haven't been this. So first and 10, and we got some whistles. Coach, coach is calling a timeout on this, I think. It was a substitution that came in late, wasn't happy with it. And they, they need to talk this over anyways. I mean, Monmouth has just been driving the football right down the field on them. Yeah, they need to talk, reconvene here, you know, redo some things. But, yeah, they almost got, a, you know, another 12-man 12 12 man on the field. Yeah, there's been 12 plays on this drive, you know. And Princeton, I don't know that I've – honestly, I don't think they've given up a 12-play drive all season. So, um Obviously, Monmouth made some really good adjustments at halftime, and they're out here now. They're executing very well too. So, in this defensive huddle right now, you gotta you gotta get settled back down. You gotta realize that this team isn't just gonna roll over because you're winning 22 to zero. So, you're gonna have to get out there, make some adjustments, and get this get this offense stopped. This is the second round of the playoffs. So unfortunately, you'll see things that you don't often see, yep. especially when your defense are going up against better offenses that you've seen throughout the year. Monmouth Roseville has been a tough team yep. all year long. Of course, a three river crossover as they are in the Rock Division instead of the Mississippi Division as the Tigers are. And, and the reality is Monmouth has been in the playoff for the last four weeks because they were three and four. They had to win their last two games of regular season just to make the playoffs. And then they had to run last week. This is their fourth round essentially for them. So first and 10 for those comeback Titans as they are in the 29-yard line of the Tigers. There's a pitch, and then Thompson's going to throw. 
but just great job by William staying home. He stayed home, but it almost so was completed. It, yeah. it was almost completed, but bounce out of the hands of number one for the Titans, Darian Smith, as number eleven, who we've been saying often as a running back yep. and a wide receiver. Peyton Thompson got the handoff and went to throw. Had a pretty accurate pass in the end zone. Princeton defense was there, and it bobbled out of the receiver's hand. Yeah, William Lott made just enough of a play. He was, you know, he wasn't. You know, I would love to obviously see him intercept the football, um, but he made enough of a play to distract the receiver, uh, which is what we needed. Second and 10 on the 29 still. They're going back to the run up the middle. Maybe got one or two. I see a little chippy pushing there as Tyler Finnecum trying to get up. Princeton guy was right there. They're a little, a little pushing, but hey, it's high school football. Yeah, I mean, nothing flagrant. It wasn't anything bad. I mean, it, it just was a, you know, whatever. But chippiness. Yeah. You'll have that, especially second round, because it's win or go home. And the reality is these teams know each other pretty well. So 22-0 to zero is the Princeton Tigers lead. Oh, Jesus. And that looked like it was going to be offside. He got back in touch. But he did. He got back before they tried to hike it. A uh, Princeton lineman fell over the line, did a little stretch, well, almost a splits, and then the Titans get a run. But uh, yeah, obviously, because of that young man's flexibility, by the, the way. The sideline wanted the flag, but they yeah, didn't he want the full flag. Stretch. But I don't actually believe it's a flag unless an offensive player responds to the motion or they snap the ball. Or they it, touch them. If they right. touch him, the fact that he, you know, went to go, slipped, fell, all that happened. Yes, we agree. But he actually didn't do anything to break the rules. So Definitely. You heard the sideline. They did not like it, but no. I think it was the right call. And he stood for a second because he was waiting for the whistle. The he he was. It, and then he put his leg back. He's like, all right, let's go. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, hot potato there for a minute. <laughs> 443. In fourth and four. This is huge down here. 443 in the third quarter. Fourth and four. 24 yard line and there's the timeout called by the Titans. They're going to call a timeout. I saw the coach, and there it's officially whistled. So yeah. 436, and the Titans have been moving the ball, run right up the middle, a couple pass plays, but have done, you know, what they wanted to do coming in here in the third yeah. quarter. Yeah, I mean, they really have, obviously. But, but on the other side of that coin, Princeton has done what they need to do if they complete this, right? Bend but don't break. Don't give up any points. It's fourth down. You've gotten to a situation. Um, and, and the odd thing was is Monmouth Roseville actually motioned out of their set that would have been the most since to run the book ball again. Looked like they are going to try to a passing play. Coach uh, Allison did not like that, called the timeout. However, if Princeton can get a stop, then it doesn't matter that you gave up, you know, 60 yards rushing the football right here because you didn't give up any points. So Princeton can still win this drive right now. This is this is where they got to win it. You can give up 400 rushing yards in a game. You don't give up no points, points you're, you're doing fine. Who, who, who cares? Who cares? And so that's what Princeton has to do. They just have to say, hey, all we have to do is win this down, and we won this drive. So... So fourth and four, this is going to be a big stop for the Tigers as the Titans are on Princeton's 24-yard line. Tigers lead 22 to 0, 436 in the third quarter. Here's the quarterback, Myers, scrambling to the right, finds Payne Thompson. He's going to get the first down, then gets tackled out of bounds about five yards past that. So they get the first down, they're on the 24, going to be right around the 15-yard line, a well-completed play. Yeah, and it was. It, we talked about it earlier about kind of like an extended handoff essentially I mean that's they they ran out there and he had the option to run and have Peyton Thompson be his lead blocker and if they made a corner which they did Princeton then he could throw it over top of their heads and throw it to Peyton Thompson and let him and let him run which obviously worked out very well for him and now Princeton's got to come up with a stop you know they got backs against the wall here First and 10 on the 15. The Titans are in Princeton territory. Myers keeping this one. Great play gets. by Andrew Peacock there. Oh, it's Ace Christensen. I'm sorry. Ace Christensen. Christensen into the backfield. Gets the tackle. Broke through the line. And, you know, Myers was a dead duck. Yeah. I mean, he, he had outside responsibility. Ace did. He was on quarterback the entire time. Didn't take for the play fake. Stayed on his man. Read his keys. Made the play. We are ticking Almost to four. We are at four. Tigers still lead 22-0. The it is clock second. is our friend, so we're not worried about that. That's great, honestly. It is second and 11 for the Titans. Myers with the fake handoff, then gives it to him. There's Thompson. Gets maybe a yard. Yeah, that Princeton defense is starting to, starting to shirt up a little bit as it gets tighter down here. 
Um, looks like they're going to give him a little more, a little more yardage than I thought they're going to get. Maybe one or two there. Um, you know, now they're third and nine is a good, you know, a good yardage for this defense, right? We we we're forcing them. We understand they have two plays to make the nine yards, but. Um, obviously forcing them to be a little more uncomfortable. It's not the four and five yard gains they need. And here we go as Myers, the Titans quarterback, behind center. He's got one receiver to his left. He's rolling to his left, looking for that receiver, but he finds number zero who drops the ball, but there's a flag. It's going to be on Common Green, I think, who actually hit the receiver, but I think it was unintentional. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna call defenseless wide receiver leading with the helmet, something like that. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Common Green turned around to bat the ball down. It bounced off the player's hands, and then Common hit him, yeah. but it was like a split second second deal and they're going to call a flag on that. Yeah. And the player is laying down. That is number zero for the Titans. Nick Houston, who is a sophomore, listed as a running back. He, I think he was in the backfield, came out for a screen pass, dropped off his hands, and then Common Green turned around to go after the ball and hit him. And yeah. That's going to be a flag. I don't think Coach Pearson nor I really agree with that call, but obviously we don't... Uh, don't have much to say about it. There's not reviews or anything like that. The player is up. He's walking to the sideline on his own accord. So, of course, no injuries. We like uh, everybody to be as safe as possible. Doesn't matter what jersey you are wearing. As the Tigers are in the white and blue with the uh, blue lettering on the white uniform and the Titans dark blue with the white lettering. So, like I said, if you like the color blue, this is the game for you. They're going to get, let's see how many yards they're actually going to give them for that penalty. Because they can't give them the full 15 because they were at, what, the 14 or 15 yard line. They're so at the 14. Be half the distance, I'm supposing. It's usually yeah. half the distance, should be seven. We are, the officials are debating. Both teams are in kind of huddle, so to say, on their side of the, the ball. Yeah, it was third and long there. And, and you know, obviously it... Uh, as I said, kind of an interesting call. Didn't really agree with it, but... Um, it's going to be a personal foul against Princeton. Yep. It's going to be first down. See where they put Looks the like ball. We got the one referee stepping it out right yeah. now. Should be seven. Should be half the distance of the goal, and that's about where he's at. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of where he put it, about the seven-yard line. So, um, obviously, not what anybody wanted. Um so it's going to be first and seven from the seven as the Titans are in the Tigers' red zone or then the Tigers' territory trying to get a touchdown here. As Tigers lead 22-0. So, I mean, it's not going to hurt so much to give up some points, but you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, you're not, you don't want to give a team hope. You don't want to give a team uh, any any sort of um, positive sort of plays. I mean, that's that's reality of a defensive player. You just don't want to do that. Um, this Princeton starting off or defense hasn't given up a touchdown in like four or five weeks. I know we gave up seven points uh, last week in the first round of playoffs uh, to the with our second string team on the on the field but the starters haven't given up um, but maybe 30 some points all season you know what I mean so uh, obviously they they have some pride out there they're not trying to give up any points at all and if you're watching on YouTube it's actually first down the marker yeah, says says fourth, fourth. but it is first so it's first and seven but there's going to looks be like another a timeout. timeout. Another timeout is the teams go to the sidelines. I don't know who called that. Um, unfortunately, our scoreboard doesn't show us who called the timeouts. So, as I said, everybody's trying to get this sorted out, make sure it's right. Um, Coach Pearson's taking this opportunity to uh, talk to the, to the line judge over there again, let him know he disagrees with uh, the call, I'm sure. But it is going to be a mute point. I... As I said, I, the only thing I can think is if they're saying that it's not an automatic first down, Brandon. So it might be fourth and two. But if so, that means the scoreboard is incorrect. Um, it could be fourth and two, but I thought it was an automatic first down. It's an automatic first down. It's an automatic, on a personal foul, it's an automatic and first that's, down. But that's what that I think. should have been 15 yards. I agree, but I think that's what the discussion is because the refs still have the line markers up as it is fourth down, and he motioned that it was fourth down. So... I think they're going to discuss this a little bit more because it is not, nobody's really consistent here, but right now there's, the, the refs are playing this as it's fourth and two. 
That is crazy because it should be first and seven. That's I, what I it think should it should be. But I don't think it's an automatic first down on person. I think it's just it 15 is. yards. It is, and that would have been a first down anyway. Well, yeah, but it was only a seven-yard game, though. But it is a – on personal fouls, it is an automatic okay. first down. Yeah. Well, the ref did not call that. So Yeah, that, that, that is a bad call by it the refs. It is and two right now I mean, on as, the seven-yard line. As Princeton, you know, radio, of course we like this, but a fourth and seven should have been first, but they're going for it. And Myers Stopped. is tackled by the Tigers, does not pick up the first down, and that's going to be a turnover on downs for the Tigers, brought to you by Ace Distribution. Ace is creating a great career culture, not a turnover. And that's a turnover on downs. Tigers sideline is happy. Yeah, I, I just said, I obviously not a rule official. I don't know it. Um, that was a long first drive of the third quarter, folks. That was the, that was the <laughs> opening drive of the second half right there. So, And we are at 253. It was a long opening drive. If Princeton can sustain a drive here, that is the best thing that could happen right there. Long drive, no, no, no time, you know, no score. And here we go. It's going to be first and 10 from their 11-yard line, the Tigers, with a pitch. That's Ace. Ace Christensen. Gets about five, about five yards. Looking at the ref across the field there, and it's going to be to the 13-yard line. They're going to give him six. So first and or second and four for the Tigers. 2:30 on the clock. The Tigers do lead the Titans 22 to zero. And here's William Lott behind center. We got a bunch formation. Everybody's right there. Pressing there, up the middle. And that is Arkles gets the handoff, maybe picks up two or three. It's going to be third, and it looks like one for the Tigers. Inching so, towards the end of the third quarter. We've got two minutes left on the clock. Yeah, this is a huge third down right here for Princeton offense. Obviously, I haven't been on the football field uh, this entire half yet. Um, you really want to be able to keep this drive sustained here. So third and one. There's the run. They're going to get the first down. Well, they go move backwards. Uh, for progress. progress, he should have the first down. Yeah, he's he's got it marked way up there by the 20 almost. And there's move, the movement of the chains. So the Tigers are now going to be at about the 19-yard line. Yeah, it looked like almost a three-yard gain on that play. I think that was Casey. I'm not sure, but... Um, so 125 is going to be first and 10 on the 19-yard line. So a tough first down, but they got it. But they got a first down. Now they're in their spread offense of Pat uh, package here. Got three receivers to the left, one to the right. William Lott is in the shotgun, and he's going to hand off. He's going to the left, looking for a gap, but cannot find yeah, one. They're going to call holding there on the edge there. And there was a flag as well. That was Casey Etheridge. So they're going to move 10 yards back on the holding call against the Tigers. Yeah, not helping themselves out there any. Um, you know, you, as I said, you really just want to be able to have a nice, long, sustained drive here and hopefully cap it off with some points. But So here we're moving backwards. They are going to be about the 13. Oh, 11. 11-yard 11 line. Now it's kind of hard to see with angles and the sun is gone. <laughs> so first and 10 on the 11 is where the officials stand and what the board says. So we're yeah. going to 11-yard line. Oh, Clock is ticking. We're about to hit a minute, and we have. Now we're in the seconds. So first and 18 for the Tigers on the 11-yard line. Lot in the shotgun, but that is a handoff to Casey thing. Etheridge. He gets past the 15. It's kind of a chippy play there by Tyler Finnick of number 15. Kind of, he was going for the ball. I know what he was doing, but it's kind of a, a little bit of a chippy play there. So they get the ball to the 19-yard line, and it's going to be second and 11. We got 25 seconds left here in the third quarter. The Tigers are up 22 to nothing. My curiosity is being—I'm trying to look here at the the back judge here to see if the clock is going to—if they're going to have to run a play or. It does appear. It looks like he's getting ready to do the arm count. Yeah, and it looks like they are they are lining up, so they're going to do a play here. William Lott behind center. That is a handoff. 
Ball to the line of scrimmage. Couldn't see who it was, but probably Casey Etheridge. Uh, yeah, just guessing, right? I mean, he's the guy that usually gets the football. <laughs> and it was. He just handed the ball to the ref. It was him. That is going to be the end of the third quarter. The number two seeded Princeton Tigers lead, number 10 Monmouth Roseville Titans, 22 to zero here in Monmouth. Brandon Schantz, Jeremy Reed, WAJK 99.3, and the YouTube channel, Star Rock Media. We'll be back with fourth quarter action. Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Twenty-seven yard run there for Casey. Uh, obviously, they've been looking for a little spark, and who better to go to than Jersey number one, Casey Eppler? He's got three touchdowns, all of the Tigers' scores, and most of the yards at the end of the game. And our post-game, we'll dive into that. <laughs> but he has been tearing it up on every facet of the football field here. And here is first and ten on the forty-seven. William Lott in the shotgun. It looked like the Titans jumped, and they did. Yeah, and he actually came across, and I think he might have got to the center there. Uh, Brett Pearson, I think, is the kind of actually touched Brett Pearson there. So that is five yards against the Titans. So for the Tigers, they move across the 50-yard line. They are now in Titan territory on their 48. That's going to be first and five. So a short set of downs here for the Tigers. William Lott in the shotgun, three receivers to his left, one to his right, and he gets the pass off to Ace Christensen, and he's gonna get past the 40, gets pushed. Oh, oh it's a tush push. It was like a, yeah, it was like a little huddle <laughs> muddle there. I don't know <laughs> what they call that, but yeah, they, they all gather together in like a rugby scrum. There was like four or five players from each team, but they went the Tigers' direction, moving yeah. Christensen. 11 yard gain. 11 yard gain as they are on the 37 yard line in Titan territory. So that was a great advancement for the Tigers. Here is William Lott behind center. And that's gonna be a handoff to Casey Etheridge. He busts to the right, gets through a couple tackles and picks up eight, nine yards before he hits the ground. Yeah, he finished that run very well, obviously, as you said, like he kind of got hit early, but he just kept running and moving his legs and Got a good, what, seven yards or maybe eight, seven, eight yards? They're going to give him seven. It's going to be second and three. He is on the 30-yard line. So now the Tigers doing a little bit of what the Titans did to them. Yeah, just running the ball right at them. And, and as I said, they're a similar offense. Here's William Lott. Here is the handoff to Casey Etheridge. Gets bottled up this time. He's going to pick up one or two right in the middle. But they're getting down in that situation where it'll be four down territory. So you can afford to, you know what I mean, only get a, a yard or two there. No matter what, you're going to have, yeah, you got, he's only needs one on third down. So they're putting themselves in manageable situations. And in the fourth quarter, just run the clock. Yep. Keep the clock moving. Just, exactly. The time is our friend right now if you're Princeton. You know, the clock running is your friend. And it is at 940. Third and one for the Tigers. They're on the 28-yard line of the Titans. There is a pitch to Etheridge. He's going to get that first down as he crossed the 25. See where they exactly they mark him, but a well-scouted out play, and they got the first down. Yeah, he stayed right behind his blockers and, and just kept 
as you said, just kind of kept going. It looked like a six-yard gain. Uh, he obviously was real close to breaking it for a big, big-time run. And we are in Titan Red Zone. That is brought to you by Princeton Chevy Buick GMC. 9.13 on the clock. It is first and 10 for the Tigers on the Titans 22. And that is the total for the Tigers on the scoreboard as they lead 22-0. William Lott behind center, kind of in a bunch formation, everybody together. Fake handoff to Casey Etheridge. There's the throw to the end zone. It's caught, but it looks like he's going to be stopped at the first for one yard line. Yeah, one yard line. Arthur Burden with a great catch there. Uh, just couldn't quite get into the end zone. I thought he was going to, but it looks like 21 yards. He needed 22. That was a great play action pass from Lott. Put it on the money. Burden with the catch. Yeah, that's the same pass that uh, Burden had last week, and he he dropped the first one, caught the second one. So happy for him. So first and one. So one and one for the Tigers. There's the handoff, and that is the touchdown. Looks like it is Arkles. Yeah, good deal. Preston Arkles with the one-yard run up the middle. The Tigers take a 28-0 lead here. A great drive by the Tigers. And they needed a great drive. Uh, you know, their, their defense was out there a long time, uh, the previous set, and obviously they needed to, to come back out and answer that. I know they didn't give up any points, but um, they really needed to come out there and set the tone a little bit and let them know that they're still here. And they did it, you know, a different version with the, the pass, getting to the one-yard line. Showing that they can do different things. Oh, they're going for two, it looks like. They are. They are lined up. We got... It's like lot right there. They give it to Casey Etheridge, and he's going to get stopped. That is not going to be converted. So it's going to be 28 to nothing, 832 in the fourth quarter. Like we said, just a smart, well-designed drive from the Tigers. A little run, some pass, a little bit of everything, mix and match. Yeah, very, uh, you know, it took a fair amount of time off. They got that ball back with a couple minutes in the third. So they ran about six minutes off the clock there on offense. Um, you know, it, it it's shaping up to be exactly what Princeton needed to do there. You hope the defense can get uh, off the field a little sooner on this drive, though. Let's see. I mean, Tigers have, uh, you know, like I said, they started off the game a little little shaky, and then yep. now they're the about middle second to the end of the second quarter, and then when they finally got a drive in the third quarter after... Monmouth Roseville pretty much took the whole quarter. They started with the ball and had it till the two minute mark. I think it was like 232 in the third quarter. That's how long that drive was. So once Princeton got the ball, they started to make things happen. Yeah, it just, it was, uh, hey, give, give credit to Monmouth Roseville. They came out with a great offensive plan to start that drive. And it took some timeouts and a long drive for Princeton to make the appropriate adjustments uh, to figure out a way to stop them and not, and not allow them to score. So. And here we are, 8.32 left in the fourth quarter. The Tigers now lead 28-0 over the Titans in the second round 3A playoff game. There's the kick inside the five returned by Monmouth Roseville. That is Peyton Thompson. He gets crossed the 30. He's dodged, get past like three Tiger tackles, but brought down around the 40. That was a fantastic run. He's a strong runner there, uh, Peyton Thompson. Um, obviously... You know, Princeton needs to actually wrap up, not just hit him hard. You know, he's a good runner. Uh, he, he did get rocked a couple of times. He got hit real hard. He got hit real hard. <laughs> but, yeah, they need to got to hit him hard and, tag, and wrap him around, too. So, um, hopefully, as I said, the defense uh, can make, you know, make a little quicker action of this. Now, the reality is is time is not on Monmouth Roseville side, so they may have to try to pass the ball, but that is not what they're built to do. The lineup doesn't show that either, as they were pretty much all together with one receiver. Myers, the quarterback, keeps it, goes up the middle, picks up about two or three yards. So they're sticking to their game plan, but they don't have that time like you just alluded to. Yeah, that, you know, that's the reality is, you know, their, their team built on, you know, running the football and controlling, you know, keeping games low scoring and, and that thought of it. But... Uh, you know, when you're down 28 points with 7.50 left, you know, you, you got you to gotta look at the clock. Second and six for the Titans on their 44-yard line. There's a handoff up the middle. He's going to get a first down, it looks like. I'm trying to see which the – now it's going to be Thompson or – Oh, number two, we got a new ball carrier. Yeah, Thompson's actually hurt on the sideline right now, so. 
Andrew Way is the sophomore running back who just picked up the first down for the Titans. Yeah, so he's a new he's, name in the mix. Yeah, filling in there for uh, number 11 Thompson. He's got to kind of banged up. He's catching his breath. He'll be okay though. Probably after that uh, return where he got hit. Yeah, he got hit pretty times. hard. So. And there's a run as they pick up another first down. They're at about the 25-yard line. They started at the 49, a huge pickup from the Titans. Who was that that carried that? That was Finnecum again. Yeah, Tyler Finnecum. He's, you know, as I said, they're sticking to their game plan. Um, and Finnecum, a senior, he's trying to show out too. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously, if you're not going to pass the ball deep, you're going to have to run the ball a long ways, right? It, in, in, in chunks, you know, that's your only option. You've got to score quick somehow. Now they're on the 23-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 for the Titans. They are in Tigers territory. The bad thing for the Tigers is as they are in their territory, but the good thing is is the Tigers have continuously stopped the Titans in the red zone, but we are marching up to about the 12-yard line. They had to have been a flag on the play, but they did not notify us. So there was no well, signaling. I'm, yeah, I'm very confused on what happened there. Like, they, they just marched off, like, I don't know, at least 10 yards like probably? 10, 15 yards as they are now on the 12. So it's first and 10 on the 12 for the Titans now as we are kind of baffled as to what happened there to get there. Must have been some sort of personal foul or, you know, like player misconduct of some sort or coach con, you know what I mean? Like 15 yard penalty is what it has to be. Uh, yeah, they, it was about 15 yards because now they're on the 12, they were in the 20s. So here we are, there's a handoff. But the Tigers defense stopped that real fast. Yeah, yeah it's. And that was Common Green and number 65, Kid Odell. Yeah, it looks like Finnegan had the carry on that one. Um. So it is now going to be second and seven for the Titans. They're on the Tigers' nine-yard line. Like I said, the Tigers have been held up tough, real strong here defensively, not letting them score once they get in the red zone. Let's see if they can keep that happening. The Titans do another run right up the middle, pick up maybe one or two. Number 15 again. That's uh, yeah, same same thing they did the entire first drive of the second half. Tyler Finnecum just right up the middle of the football field. Um, they're going to continue this strategy, obviously. I mean, even if they get this touchdown, you know, they still ate off enough clock where, and then Princeton can run and right. you know take some. They, more they have to figure out a way to get turnovers, or they have to. Uh, you know, onside kicks or something of that nature, right? They got to get the ball back somehow. Well, for Tigers fans, they don't have to. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I meant for them to be, yeah. <laughs> yes, I know what you're saying. And here is the handoff for the Titans and drilled by the Tigers defense. <laughs> Thompson comes back in on the very first play. They hand him the ball and I Kate Odell. think it was Kate Odell that said hello. <laughs> Just rocked him. Yeah. Uh... The, well, that's what you can say that? about that. Just, yeah. oh, like, like, you, just, you just came through the line and just rocked them. Yeah. A great stance by the defense. Like I said, once they get in the red zone, the Tigers are like, okay, they're not scoring. The true, true bend but don't break type of strategy here, right? Uh, obviously, fourth and seven, huge down here to, to continue the shutout. 5.29 on the clock. The Titans are on the nine yard line of the Tigers. And here it looks like it'd be a pass as quarterback Myers scooping out to the right. He throws, almost intercepted off of William Lott's hands, but hits the ground. That was a great, great defensive adjustment there. Middle of it, you know, threw the ball back to the inside, and, and William planted his foot, made a cut back, and, and made a great play on it. And that is going to be another turnover on downs for the Tigers, brought to you by Ace Distribution. Ace is creating a great career culture, not turnover. Join the winning team at the Ace Distribution Center today. The Tigers' defense holds strong. Like we said, every time the Titans get into the, the red zone, the Tigers aren't letting it happen. Yeah, they, they just buckle down a little bit back there, which you, you kind of like to see them buckle down in the middle of the field and not get that close, but... So it is first and 10 on the nine. Here is going to be the run game from the Tigers. May have got one or two the line of scrimmage. I was say it was Preston Arkles, it looks like. He just tossed the ball over the head, but we got a slew of Tigers <laughs> in the way. We can't see him. I'm going to go ahead and give him credit it for it. It looks like body language inside. Yeah, it looks like... like it looks like Arkles. We'll give him credit for it. Because then he goes on the other side of the lineman, so yeah. now you can't even see his helmet. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and he's not the tallest guy on the football field. I think that would probably be reserved for William Law, or uh, not for Noel, Noel Laporte. He's probably 6'6". Six, six. Yeah. And here is the handoff, oh. and that looks like Ace Christensen it is. He is through a gap. He's to the 40-yard line, a huge pickup. That's got to be about 30 yards. Yeah, he was at the 9, got to the 41, so that's, you know, yeah, a little over 30 yards, actually. Great pick up from Ace Christensen. We saw the gap open, and we saw him run through it in our direction, yeah. and then goes down the field. It was great, great um, misdirection motion. Everybody else went right. Ace was coming back left for a 32-yard game there. Good pickup from Ace. Four minutes, 15 seconds. There is the pitch to Casey Etheridge going to the right side. He's got room. He picks up at least seven, eight. There's the first down going for another five. He's still not down. Gets to the 40-yard line on the other side. He did not go down. I, I have to draw attention to it. Anybody watching YouTube, go ahead and rewind it. Number 14 is the quarterback for the Princeton Tigers. That young man pitched the ball, got out in front, made two blocks, continued him and Preston Arkles were ahead of the play trying to do a pancock, pancake block on a young man down there. What a play. That was awesome. First and 10 for the Tigers on the 41 yard line of the Titans. And it looked like a handoff, but he's gonna keep it. William Lott gets maybe one yard and there's a flag. He might've got hit late. Yeah, that looked like a busted play, as you said it, but, you know, he made the best of it, so. Looked like he was going for the handoff, and I don't know if the handoff didn't work, so he kept it. Got about a yard, and then he was taken down. And, yeah, that's going to be against Monmouth Roseville. It looked like a personal foul. I think he got hit late after he was already on the ground. Yeah, it's the same thing they kind of called earlier on Common Green that I didn't necessarily agree with. Again, I don't know that I necessarily agreed with it. I don't know that it was ill intent. Maybe it was. It's hard to see from this angle. But, obviously, refs got to make that call on the field, and that's their job. So. Yep, and he's strutting 15 yards down the field as we are now going to be at the it's like 26. I think we're at the 26 yard line. We are. So it's going to yeah. be first and 10 for the Tigers. 26. And you know where we're at. We're in the red zone. Brought to you by Princeton Chevy Buick GMC. Yeah, with three minutes left. Oh, three minutes left. Oh, we had a fumble. We'll see who picks it up. There's no excitement. So it looks like Tigers <laughs> jumped on it. Yeah, I think that's an easy thing to say, right? The, yeah. the, home, the home crowd was not happy. But all I saw was the ball go straight up in the air. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> Well, they did. Oh, they did. Nobody knew, though. Yeah. So nobody could cheer. Um, <laughs> but now they're cheering because they give it to the Titans. Yes. So that is a fumble for the Tigers. The Titans are going to have it at about the 26-yard line. Yeah, a little bit of a miscue there. Um, obviously, though, as I was trying to say, there's three minutes left in this football game. You're up 28-0. to zero. What I was going to say is you want this Princeton offense to continue to drive, maybe eat the rest of the clock up, and you, you don't even care if you score. You just want to eat the rest of the clock up. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So, But on the other hand, what the Titans have been doing <laughs> is eating up the clock. So, like, okay, you can eat it up. We're just not going to let you score again. Fair enough. So here we go. It's going to be first and ten for the Titans. And here is the keeper from Myers. It's about oh. two yards until he runs into nine. Is that Burden? Yeah, that's Arthur Burden. Number nine is Arthur Burden. Oh, my goodness. He hit him hard, too. And if he was just about an inch higher, that would have been helmet to helmet. Yeah. But instead, he just drilled him in his chest. I, it's, that's one of those things that takes the breath away from you from that, you know, if you get hit right there in the chest like that, chest plate. I think you're breathing a little funny now. Did that hurt you? Yeah, it hurt me. I was, I was hurt. I hit him so hard, it hurt me. <laughs> so uh, second and eight, they give him two on that one. 2.40 left in the game. Princeton leads 28 nothing. So it's all but over, just waiting for the ticks to continue. Here is Myers, the quarterback, looking for a throw. He's getting rushed and sacked and rumbled. And it is going to be Princeton. Princeton's ball, so they get to him, put pressure on him, hit him, it was 55, gets him to the ground, is that Jack May? Jack May's Jack 55, May. and then, yeah, because because Payne Miller started it, and he's the one that ended up recovering the fumble, but as you said, uh, it looked like Jack May and Cato Joe knocked the ball loose there at the end. So. Got the ball loose, hop on it, and it is Tiger's ball. So Literally right, right back where it was, right, right after the fumble, they're like, hey, we'll let you have the have, ball back, but we're going to take it. Have it back, you guys have that ball. <laughs> First and 10 for the Tigers, they're on the 20 yard line of the Titans, a just a handed off back and forth fumble style from team to team. And here's the pitch from William Lott to 
We're trying to see the number. It looks like Ace Christensen. It is, and he might have a touchdown. Oh, no, he's going to be tackled at the one-yard line, it looks like. So about an 18-19 yard gain for Ace Christensen. He hit that corner and was right there at the pylon, but got hit first. And and you know, I mentioned the play before, William Lott out front, providing some great key blocks there. Um, it's always fantastic to see everybody on the football field blocking, especially a quarterback. Yep, especially a quarterback. Got to give him respect for it. So first and one as Ace Christensen was tackled on the one yard line. And they are going to go to Arkles, but he is met by three Titans, and they bring him back. But for progress, he's probably still at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I don't think they're going to give him any negative yards. Maybe one negative yard, but, yeah, it uh, looked like Tyler, Tyler Finnecum there made a great defensive play. They do cut him down one, so it's going to be second and two for the Tigers. One at 27 on the clock and ticking. The Tigers lead 28-0, trying to add to the score here. Second round playoff action, 3A bracket, IHSA style. Tigers trying to score again. Here's William Lott behind center. There's, can't see if he kept it. No, he gave it, gave yep. it to oh, no, no, not number nope. three. I'm sorry, it was Ace. Ace, they had to give Ace a touchdown. Yep. Ace, Ace did all the work. Give him the touchdown. After he got to the one-yard line, they're like, hey, we'll just finish it off there. 34 nothing after a one-yard carry by Ace Christensen, another Tiger score. And... That's the, uh, the fans for Titans, you know, they've been energetic, but now, you know, it's 34-0. Yeah, I, I think the, after that touchdown prior to this, it was kind of the writing on the wall for them. And the kick was good. Carlos Benavides. Benavides. Uh -oh. uh -oh. Benavides. Benavides. Yeah. I was writing and trying to write at the same time. But Carlos Benavides, got to say correctly, puts on the extra point kick for 35-0 Princeton. And as soon as I did it, I looked at you like, how do I, I miss like, say? You missed your name. guy. You missed cannot, your guy. Cannot mess up Carlos Benavides. Uh, yeah, obviously one minute left, 35 up. You know, you can, you can put this one in the books and, and start thinking, you know, you got Lombard Montini next week. And Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank, our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! So um, pretty much, if they get past Montini and then play Byron, one of those games are pretty much the state, the state championship. championship, right? Yep. So here is the kick from Princeton to Monmouth Roseville. Get it at the 10-yard line, but he is tackled at uh, the 26-yard line. But want to say thank you to SITK, our touchdown sponsor, and our extra point sponsor, Town and Country. Thank you for getting that spider that was creeping on our window. I saw it, and you're like, hey, I got it. I, I got, got that spider. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I didn't need to be like Peter Parker or nothing and have some <laughs> skills when I woke up in the morning that I wasn't ready to utilize. <laughs> Jimmy Reed, a.k.a. Spider-Man. <laughs> Welcome to the Spider-Verse. 104 on the clock. The Tigers lead 35-0. to zero. Monmouth Roseville, first and 10. And they're just running, so they, they know the writing's on the wall, game's over, and let's just have our seniors represented, because that is senior Tyler Finnegan. Yeah. Finnegan. And he gets about four yards, but he's a senior. They let's represent our seniors in their last game. He's had a fantastic second half of football. You know, I mean, I know they've they've only had the ball three times, but every time he's been their counter or their, their center point of their team, um, and he's got 70 yards here in the second half, you know, so... Here is another play, another handoff. If they run up the middle, breaks through for a first down. And it looks like Finnegan again. Yep. His team is helping him up. He is hurting. He's been rocked a couple times. And he's starting to get emotional, too, yeah. as they are doing the hugs. And he is walking, limping, sort of limp walking, running off to the sideline. Coach giving his seniors hugs, patting him on the helmet for a great season, a great career. And we are at 15 seconds and, and ticking. They might do one more play just just cause. Yeah. 
and they do. There's a pitch to 11. That's Peyton Thompson, but the Tigers put the explanation point on it as Kate O'Dell drives him to the ground and ends the game. Ends it. 35-0, the Princeton Tigers advance past the second round. They are going to the quarterfinals of the 3A playoffs. It's exciting. It is exciting. It is. It's fantastic. Obviously, uh, that's not where their goal ends if you're a Princeton Tiger, you know, getting to the, the quarterfinals. They've done that. They need to go further. Brandon Shots, Jeremy Reed, we will be back to talk about that and more in the postgame show. WAJK 99.3 and the Star Rock Media YouTube channel. Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! In Monmouth, we just wrapped up the Second round class 3A game between number two seeded Princeton Tigers and number 10 Monmouth Roseville Titans. The Tigers victorious 35 to zero. They are going to move on to the quarterfinals. Well, they will they will play Montini. Like we were saying, it is going to be a tough matchup, but I, you have to be ready at this point for the Tigers, for any high school football team this far in the playoffs, to be ready to play your best game. Yeah, I mean, 100%, right? You're 100% you're right on that, Brandon. Like, you get to the quarterfinals, it doesn't matter what team shows up. They're going to be good. There's no team showing up that doesn't deserve to be there. Um, it just happens to be, you know, Lombardi Montini is the team we draw next. Uh, it will be in Princeton. And, you know, they're, as I said, they're just a tough ball glove. They, they were playing like a 5A schedule, to be honest. They play a 5A schedule. Um, they're down a little bit. Um, they're back here in the 3A uh, bracket. They, they think they finished the year at 5-4. and four. But they play, I mean, they play real big schools. So uh, Coach will have to have a good game plan for it. No doubt. Let's get back to this game real yep. quick. I'll do the scoring drives. You do the stats. And we will then you know, do what we do, what we love to do, the awards. Mm -hmm. Got to love the awards. And, of course, our sponsor mentions, again, thank you for everybody that sponsors. We'll list them. We will have more ads for the great businesses that help bring the Princeton Tiger games to WAJK 99.3. In the first quarter, 725 mark. Casey Etheridge, a 72-yard run, and then Ace Christensen with a two-point run for an 8-0 Tiger lead. In the second quarter, Casey Etheridge scored twice on a four-yard run and a three-yard run. Carlos Benavidez made both extra point kicks for a 22-0 Princeton halftime lead. In the third quarter, Preston Arkles found the end zone at 8.32 with a one-yard run. The run two-point conversion failed, so it was 28-0 Tigers. And then with 1.09 left in the game, Ace Christensen got on the board with a one-yard run that he set up with a 19-yard completion before then. And then Carlos Benavidez with another kick for the 35-0 Princeton lead. Stats, what do we got, Jeremy? Yeah, that was fantastic uh, day out there for those young men. Um, I'm going to do a little team stat here first. Looks like they had about 320 yards uh, rushing today, about 86 passing. Um, as you said, five rushing TTs in total. Um, no passing touchdowns. Had a hand, had had nine, at least nine penalties that we, you know, probably ten, but um, that's a little frustrating. However, um, Casey Etheridge, 200, unofficially, 228 yards and three TDs. Week one, he had 214 and four TDs. So something about playing this Monmouth-Roseville team uh, allows Casey Etheridge to really get going out there. Um, Christensen ended up having a really nice game. He ended up getting about 70 yards rushing and about 20 yards receiving. So he in about 100 yards from scrimmage. So another fantastic game for him, too. So overall, uh, gritty win. Um, you know, it wasn't the prettiest win, and that's okay. You know, it's still a win. It still counts in the books. High school football, a win's a win. Survive and go on, right? You never remember, you know, how beautiful it looks. Exactly. You look at the stats, you look at the score, and you smile when you advance in the playoffs. That's all that matters. Daniel Lachance, Jeremy Reed, we will be right back after a couple more words from our sponsors for our fantastic awards we give out after the games. Yeah. 
Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Today's Princeton Tigers live stream playoff game is brought to you by Central Bank. Our central focus is you. Princeton Chevrolet GMC, automotive service you can count on in Princeton. SITK Kitchen and Bath, let's imagine together. Support our sponsors as they support the Princeton Tigers on their way to the state championship. Go Tigers! Jeremy Reed post game show here as the Princeton Tigers advance in the 3A IHSA football bracket, defeating number 10 Monmouth Roseville 35 to 0. Princeton, the number two seed, advanced to the quarterfinals to play Montini. We've did all the scoring plays, we did all the stats. Now it's time for our awards. Tonight's drive of the game brought to you by the Bill Walsh Automotive Group. Find your next ride without doing any driving at all. Just go to BillWalsh.com. We did not do, do any rehearsing. We did not do any <laughs> pre, you know, decisions. award decisions. Yeah. So I'm putting you on the spot right now. What's the drive of the game? So it's the, it'd be the first scoring drive for the Princeton Tigers, not the first drive overall because that was that terrible drive they had, but uh, I think it, it was capped off by a 72-yard run by Casey Etheridge. Um, it was 
for me, the drive of the game because they did so bad the first three downs out there, came back out there, reset, and got after it and had a great play to cap it off. And it was the best play of the game. It was fantastic. 72-yard touchdown run. He fantastic. broke through tackles. He almost got a shoelace tackle. Somebody grabbed his yep. feet. He powers through. I, I totally agree with you. Yep. Drive of the game. Now, drum roll. Da -da. <laughs> the Princeton Tigers player of the game brought to you by First State Bank. First State Bank is locally owned, committed to exceptional service and convenient products like Zelle and on-the-go mobile banking. To learn more, contact the winning team at First State Bank. I think I know who we're going to go here, but who you got, Jeremy? Uh, it is going to be exactly who you think, but I'm going to, before I announce it, I'm going to give an honorable mention to the entire defensive unit for staying strong out there, making adjustments on the game and making plays. The entire defensive unit did a great job there. But I'm shaking my head, with, yes. But, I yeah. but without Casey Etheridge doing what he does against Monmouth Roseville Titans, you don't win the football game, right? He, he carried the team literally, figuratively, all of those words to the end zone. It's Casey Etheridge again. He comes to Monmouth. He gets played of the games. That's what he does. Definitely. Three, the first three touchdowns were him. Uh, how many yards did he have again? He had over 228 yards. He had 214 the first time he played him. So you, you don't you don't break 200 yards. And I said he's a top five rushing total in the entire state of Illinois right now for yardage. So you just don't have those numbers and not you know what I mean? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Your player of the game. Yeah. He ran two football fields. Yeah, and scored three times. That's right. Crazy. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to us and watching us. The Star yeah. Rock Media YouTube channel. Hopefully, it was an awesome experience. It was for us. It was, it was great. It was fun. Can't wait till next week. Definitely. We got to do our shout outs first for the guy doing the video, Mike Sabatini. Thank you very much for bringing us on the YouTube channel so everybody can see us. Of course, the guy behind the scenes, Mike Redman, always making us sound great. I mean, we got okay voices, but he does the good stuff. He makes us sound great. Yep. And of course, our sponsors who help us. Come to these games, help bring Princeton Tigers to you, whether it's WAJK 99.3, the app WAJK 99.3, or, like we said, Starve Rock Media YouTube channel, Heartland Auto Body, McDonald's of Princeton, Town & Country Services, Princeton, Chevy, Buick, GMC, SIT Kitchen, Town & Country, In Home Care, Ace Distribution, Bex Oil, Bill Walsh, and First State Bank. Thank you very much for listening to us and the Tigers advancing to the quarterfinals of the IHSA Class 3A playoffs. It is exciting. I'm pumped. I'm excited as well. Can't wait till next week. We'll see you Saturday. See you then. Drive home safe.